Yes, sir. We are back again. Y'all know what it is. Another episode of R.A.O.P. It's your boy, Mr. Jefferson. It's your boy, Ampavelli. It's your boy, DJ Prince Patron. Yes, man, sir. A legend in the building, yeah, actually. Man, a long time in the making, man. We supposed to been do this, but fuck it. Perfect timing. Come nah. on. For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made me feel good. Hey, man. I've been wanting to come on here for a long time. Uh, hey, <laughs> let me tell you. So, I be telling Amp all the time about uh, back in the day when I used to go to all these parties and shit. And you was spinning at these parties, you know what I'm saying? We done bro, we done, uh, what they say, uh, brush shoulders a few times, you know what I mean? But, uh, nigga, back in the day, you used to have a motherfucking party rocking, nigga. I'm talking to teen clubs, nigga. Aqua, motherfucking, uh, Boleros, motherfucking. (laughs) (laughs) One time for the one time, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, when, uh, boy, I got legendary nights, you know what I'm saying, in my life where I can remember <laughs> this nigga spinning records, you know what I'm saying, at the club, had us so turned, that bitch got shut down. Damn, what's your craziest night at an event he spent? Um, boy, we was probably in the, I mean, deep in the motherfucking hood on north, on the north side somewhere. Probably I can't so, even remember where it probably was. Uh, probably Uh Probably. Uh, so as soon as the club ended, Nigga, we go outside, and I mean, Rose, damn, I forgot, I can't, um, Rose close as fuck, so, bro, they shooting, I'm talking shot, everything <laughs> going off, right, we go to the truck, dumping everything, bro, we get in the truck, and we leaving, I don't know what the fuck was going off, that bitch had the truck rocking, nigga, like, nah. dog. It was like they were shooting cannons next to us. <laughs> I say, God, they was, turn, they was turning the truck up. Oh, nah, nah, nah. Thank oh, God they weren't oh, shooting oh. the truck. It hey, was just that loud. Boy, trust. I was looking around. I said, We good. Drive this motherfucker. <laughs> bro, everybody was shooting in the air that night, but it yeah. was one of those, like, Yeah. Bro, the club was that turnt. Like, everybody just sprawled out and, man, they let that bit out. You just go out back? You just go out back there? Nah, I'm going out all. Ain't, going out all. Nah, ain't, ain't. It, it's Stories like that is the reason why I don't go out, bro. But man. that wasn't the... Nah, that wasn't... Yeah. happened, nah, but it yeah. wasn't the, like... It this was not it was every not, week thing. Right, right, yeah, right. right. I ain't not, ignorant. I know that shit don't yeah, happen every yeah, night. Yeah, it yeah. happened here. Yeah. Now, the best, like, best night I can say inside, this... This club we was at looked like it ain't had no lights. That <laughs> bitch had mirrors all along the back wall. I probably went in six deep Everybody got everybody back something. Every it was so many women like, bro. Yeah. yeah, the the parties yeah. used to be lit, man. Different time, man. The way different time. Different time. People used to dance. Man, <laughs> what? Dancing what? Bro, used to dance it wasn't no VIP. I mean, VIP <coughs> back then was just the line. Yeah. But VIP you was you in, getting in quick. You, you yeah. Ever, yeah. Once you get in, you, you same thing everybody yeah. else. It, 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 it wasn't no judgment as far as like I mean yeah you still had your judgment if you was ugly you know what I'm saying yeah, you might you yeah, know what I mean yeah. but what I mean is like <laughs> for the most part if you came in that bit well prepared you know what I'm saying let's yeah. just say it like that yeah. everybody could grab something I feel you you could grab something you could have a hell of a night you know what I mean you could dance you could you could party like it you could meet people and legit just off you seeing them. At so many Patron parties, it's like, shit. Yeah. What's up? Yeah, yeah, shit. We sure. locked in, nigga. <laughs> so, let me, let me ask both of y'all. What's different about the club culture from now to then? Because I seen a tweet, because y'all know Big Meech had got out. Yeah. Somebody had tweeted. It was like, uh, Big Meech going to throw up when he see that the women got to bust down the section now. <sighs> well, that was, we could start with there. Yeah. Um, it wasn't when I first started. I started when I was like 16. Uh-huh. Um, so damn, it's been about, yeah, yeah, it's been a minute. Um, when it wasn't no sections. Damn. That was like the first immediate thing. It wasn't no sections or it wasn't no difference between, or at least in the team party. Right. It wasn't no difference between being general pop mm. versus you being, you know, VIP. Right. You know what I'm saying? At the most, you can come up there on the stage with the DJ if you if you know if the you DJ, fuck in, you know yeah, what I'm saying, yeah, or something yeah. like that. But other than that, that's about the most preferential treatment that you're gonna get. It wasn't 
no, I mean, we in team spots, so there weren't no bottles or anything like right, that. And right. even, like, when I first started going to the adult club, it was bottles, but it wasn't, like, bottle service. It right. It was just, like... A nigga had a bottle a at a table. A nigga just had a bottle. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of times, that, like, far back as I can remember, when if, when I first started going to 18 and up, I think my first, like, I don't remember my first 18 and up club, but I think the first time I was in the club paying attention to, like, VIP would have been, like, plush. Okay. I remember they had like plush, a real yeah. big, yeah, like a real, real big club, and they actually had space for a VIP. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of paying attention, but you used to buy a bottle back then and just go to the bar and get it. Exactly. Not and just that, back yourself. You be at a, a, a table in a crowd full of people with a bottle. You know what I'm right. saying? Like right. you could be in the midst of of the club mm-hmm. with a bottle and feel mm-hmm. like you 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 VIP in itself. You know a lot of people, saying? even if they had a table back then, they'll get the bucket of ice in mm-hmm. the bottle and they'll just go to the, the floor the and just floor. Yep. have it between your legs or whatever. Or yeah. Have somebody hold it. You know, everybody want to hold the bottle. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have somebody hold the bucket of ice or whatever. So, <laughs> so <laughs> get you a pick or two. You know, so I mean. That that alone kind of changed the dynamic for the club along with the music as well. I think the music had a big impact on the vibe of the club. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, I think back then, like, if you wanted to hear a certain record, you had to wait for it to be played on the radio. You mm-hmm. couldn't just play it. Remember that? All right. Remember yep, that? Yep, you had to wait. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Unless you, you know, you know, you know, little nap stuff, right, 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 right. Be, But everybody and wasn't you still, doing that. that. You still talk about burn CDs type you shit. See you see what, what I'm saying? saying? Like, everybody wasn't hey, doing that. That's right. why I was a CD man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? If everybody yeah. was doing it, it, wouldn't be no CD man. Straight up. So, like, if you was just a regular person, you have to wait or hear it on the radio. Or wait to one of us park or wait to whenever. So, yeah, I think that. You with the club back then a lot because it was certain songs you probably know that they're gonna play, but you know you can't really just readily hear yeah, them yeah. like whenever. You but you know if you go here, they play this kind of music and they're gonna play these type of songs that I can't hear on a regular basis yeah. in succession. So it made the club more I don't wanna say a necessity, but it had a, a higher demand, I would say. Yeah, that makes sense because I'm assuming like people already on the way to the club, they probably already listening to the song they want to play here anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it kind of killed a moment. And I'm going to tell you another thing people don't realize. Since music is readily available, everybody everybody has their own taste now, even more so than what they used to because you have access to, everybody had Apple Music or Spotify. You got right. access to any genre of music, right. any, almost any reputable artist. So it's kind of like, even in your own car, that same car on the way to the club, if it's for yeah. y'all, you playing that, but... He might want to hear something else, and the other two people in the back, they might have a different idea in mind that they want to hear, hey, hey, play this next. Yeah. So it's like when you get in the club, even though all four of y'all came together, all four of y'all really got a different kind of vibe. Oh, yeah, definitely. That makes sense. And y'all in the same section. Right. That makes sense. And then we talking about in one section. Yeah, yeah. Do you got everybody else (laughs) say? So everybody is, they, they, in their mind, they own DJ. Yeah. Before they come in there. That's some real shit. You know what I'm saying? One reason, one thing I don't like about club culture today, I feel like it's it's too much of a facade everywhere you go. You know what I mean? Everybody's trying to pitch this. You know what I mean? I'm better than you, you know, kind of lifestyle. And it's like, yo, just be like being real. We out here to get drinks. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like get drunk, have a good ass night, get the fuck on. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like enjoy yourself and. The people who come like that are that have that in mind, they typically had the best time. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that's why people say they have more fun out of town because your whatever you have in your mind, your pretenses or whatever, your guard is let down because yeah. that's what you have in mind. That's it. You're going yeah, out you- to have fun, to hang out, to get just drinks. But when you're home... You see this person, man. You, see you that know, person, you, it just be a whole nother element of yeah. of the club that don't exist when you're out of town. Yeah. So I don't know if you really having more fun. You just, Got I mean, this. you think about it. I mean, you are having more fun, but but because you're thinking about it differently. Yeah. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. So it's, it's a mental thing. Like I'm assuming, like if you're in a club out out of town, you ain't seeing people. You know already, so you want to like unwind more. Like you ain't got to worry about like, damn, I know this nigga. He, mm-hmm. he, he judging me and whatnot, mm-hmm. different shit like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When um, see, 
I only had one real time here where I got like drunk and a nigga was out in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I was dancing in biggies and shit like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> For uh, Tremaine wedding. <laughs> but out of town, hang it. Man, what? Hang it. Because that's what you, that's what you, <laughs> I'm not going to say that's what you came there to do, but that's a part of it. Yeah, yeah. And it's also, you don't have to, you know, you know that, hey, I ain't going to see these people tomorrow type shit. You know what I mean? And not to say that's how I'm moving, but my thing is, you know, you are more comfortable in mm-hmm. doing something without the thought of, is somebody recording me? Mm-hmm. Is somebody waiting on you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Me to do so, like it ain't eyes on me particularly. I'm just another face in the crowd type shit, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you're not trying to uphold. If 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 you do that, you're not trying to uphold. Not saying you specifically, but yeah. a, a, just a, a person. If you do go to the club and you try to uphold an image at home, yeah. When you go out of town, you probably not trying to uphold it as much. You probably gonna try to just do what the Romans do. That's real. That's real. <laughs> the uh, wine. Next thing you know, I remember that story. You be te- what Joe be telling the one you was in Pensacola where you be out. You was out in the street. Oh my god! Yeah, you end up like that nigga, bruh, bruh. <laughs> drunk as time. That was your drunkest time. That was definitely one of my drunkest times. I'm trying to think, is it my drunkest? (laughs) So the story is, like, I'm going to make it as brief as possible. My nigga was in the Coast Guard. Mm -hmm. His, like, homies and shit, like, the people he was uh, uh, stationed with type shit was predominantly white. So they get hammer drunk. Hammer drunk. Different kind of party. I'm talking by the end of the night, like, my cup heavy now and i'm probably like right here you know what i'm saying we talking full cups every month they had this shit in pensacola called gallery night which is like art walk on crack you know what i mean open drinking all kinds of shit they killed it now but i can see why right (laughs) so uh then you go to this after hour spot so nigga dog by three o'clock in the morning i had 11 full cups of liquor and I had only been out there two two hours. You know what I'm saying? So I'm faded. Like, I threw up in the club, mm. fell asleep, woke up to throwing up. You know mm. what I'm saying? So the nigga kicked me out of the club. I got my mm. homie cell phone because this nigga was like, hey, yo, hold my phone. I was using his phone to call my cousin type shit. Right. For a ride, I was like, man, I need to go home before I started. He was like, hey, man, just hold my phone. I'm finna go use the bathroom. <laughs> Fell asleep, woke up, ugh. security come, throw me out. Man, I had on a button up shirt. I ended up taking that bit off. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking outside on the street. I had been outside 45 minutes at this point. I kept circling around thinking I found my car. Nigga, it's a complete identical. I, w- I had borrowed my grandfather's car. I was staying with my grandparents nah. at that time. I, w- I had just moved to Pensacola. I was staying with them. Uh, and I had borrowed his car because I was just like, yo, I'm. Preserving gas type right. shit <laughs> For whatever reason His shit was more roomier Long, long story short That's the one you wanted to drive Bruh That's the one you wanted to drive. I kept thinking I done found the car It's a complete identical It's a wrong car I'm sticking my key in it Like I wonder why it ain't working I'm the only motherfucker That's got this car You know what I'm saying Right Bro, I was three, four blocks the other way. I ain't find out till the next morning. I had to be to work at seven. I ain't make it home till six thirty. I want to say, in the morning, come in drunk as fuck. I ended up on the street. Like I say, after I got kicked out, probably like forty five minutes to an hour after, I had took my shirt off. I'm like, man, I'm tired as fuck. Puffed that bitch into a pillow. I fell asleep on the street. <laughs> no. Dog, this couple was walking past holding hands. <laughs> just imagine you and your girl. You know what I'm saying? Y'all right. walking down. Let's just say river walk. You know what I mean? Yeah. You walking down the street thinking life is good. Hell of a night. Y'all, y'all done had a few drinks, but it ain't even you faded. You know what I'm saying? Y'all right. just going home for a beautiful evening. And then you see a nigga in a tank top wake up out his sleep <laughs> like golem, nigga. Help me. No help, bro. I was begging. <laughs> help. I was begging, nigga. I woke up. I said, "Man, let me get home." I called an Uber. 
No, fuck no. They th- that nigga grabbed his girl. All right, Boy, that nigga homeless. That nigga grabbed his girl like I was a villain. Yeah, if I see a nigga you on the street, I'm like, I probably yeah, homeless, yeah, I just saying. I'm gonna get that nigga a dollar. Oh, I definitely would have thought I was homeless. Nigga, I could have been homeless. Like, <laughs> if, that's crazy. All I had, on, like, my button up was puffed into a pillow on the ground. I'm in a tank top mm. and loafers, nigga. Yes, I look homeless, bruh. Fat. Mm. So, long story short, um, call the Uber. I'm dragging myself into the car. Like, nigga, I military crawled. Like, my legs was paralyzed to the car. And she said, are you gonna make it? I said, I don't know. Get me home. You know what I'm saying? Man, dog. That was the worst. That was one of my worst nights, for sure. I never had a night like that. Yeah, I was fucked up. I had so much to drink, nigga. I vowed to never drink with that nigga again. What y'all was drinking? Everything. That's my problem. <sighs> Bruh. That is a problem. We started. Well, your first problem, you were drinking with some military niggas. That's they true, too. Alcohol. Yeah, yeah them was... niggas just drink alcohol like water. Bruh. Yeah. But see, here's the thing. I have been hanging with them niggas for like... Yeah, 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 just... I have been hanging with them niggas for like three, four months. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I have built up my tolerance, right? Nah, but when I tell been... you four cups... I it mean, 11 primary. cups. 11 cups. Oh, they was trying. They was trying. They, they was trying, yeah. Get, they was getting you ready for the, the big kahuna. <laughs> they tried, dog. I wasn't ready, nigga. That one night, bro, we went crazy. I think it was like somebody's birthday weekend or something. We went crazy, nigga. Taking shots beforehand. Like, we was playing pool and shit. Every shot you hit, you take a shot type shit. Yeah. Nigga. Unless you on that base or that boat, wherever they at, you ain't gonna never be prepared. You ain't gonna never drink like they drink. Dog, I, I was not prepared, bro. Right. Shots, beer, then we get out, and I'm talking, that's when the 11 <coughs> drinks started, when we got to the streets. Bro, I was fucked up. I said, never again, dog. That nigga, I, I called somebody 30 times. I thought that was that nigga roommate, right? Called 30 times. 4.53 in the morning. From It started. I called till 6.30 when I made it home. It was somebody grandmother's home phone number. <laughs> wow. So you know that bitch was ringing off the hook. Wow. I felt so bad, nigga. Granny ain't getting no sleep. Though. Oh, my God. Boy, you fucked somebody night up, bro. Man, 100%. Not yeah. only yours or somebody else's, man. That's crazy, man. <laughs> Shaking my damn head. Yeah, I ain't had no night like that, man. I done managed to avoid all these nights. But see, I ain't gonna lie though, when I go to DJ on. I guess maybe when I was younger, but I don't really go to get drunk. I just right, be going right. to work. Yeah. But I, mean, I do drink, but it's just not like you know. It's drunk. definitely different yeah. as a um a patron than a you mm-hmm. know service provider. In that sense, let me ask you this: How long have you been DJing now? I, so, I think technically, so I was rapping first. Really? Yeah, I was rapping first. I was rapping probably for like, probably like three years. Probably like when I was like thirteen, mm-hmm. thirteen, fourteen, something like that. So, I got ready to turn sixteen. Is it 16 or 17? I can't really remember off top. Shout out to the Azul over there. <laughs> um, so it was either 16 or 17, and a, a buddy called me and was like, hey, man, you know, I was rapping. Yeah. He was like, hey, man, you know, do you want to come perform at this club and do your birthday, you know, the same time? Shout out to Quez. His name Quez Nino. Yeah. So Quez called me. He was like, hey, come do this. I was like, shh. I, I come to it. I don't. At the time, I wasn't really. I had kind of just started going to parties. I, I was going to parties late because yeah. at first I wasn't like I was scared of clubs and, and girls and and like, I ain't even go to my every grade prom. Really? Nah, I was scared, nigga. Like dancing with girls. That shit was like <laughs> it's crazy because I went to elementary school, but then like I guess when I got older, yeah, yeah. I just got scared, bro. By eighth dance, grade, like, I was turned up. I wouldn't turn, bro. I ain't turn up to probably like, probably like sophomore, junior year. I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. I think I had, not to say, no, I damn sure didn't calm down. My dean, my eighth grade dean, my seventh grade dean, she called me JoJo Dancer. 
I wasn't doing none of that, bro. I wasn't doing it. That's what I was scared that's, of, too. That's racist. I was scared of dance. She was black. She, she, she uh, was like, yeah, you know. I was about to say, bro, that's kind of racist, bro. Yeah, she she definitely gave me the prefaces. She was like, hey, you kind of got to watch the film. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. your name is Joe. Richard Pryor played the film. You know what yeah. I mean? She was like, you know, it's a moment of history. Go, yeah, go watch the film. That's how I got put on. So I say it probably been like, 15, 16 years? Yeah. Yeah. I started like throwing parties first though. I did that for like a year. And that's what that's what Quest put you on to with, you know, with your with your um it birthday. was really right. So I was coming to I, I performed that night. It was swole. And the promoter for the night, it wasn't Quest, but it, uh, one of the like like the other promoters, like the main dude who had something to do with it. Like his son was my age. Gotcha. So, like, that next week, it was swole. The party was swole. It was packed. I don't even think everybody got in. But I didn't know I didn't really know anything about throwing parties and making money. Or I didn't really know anything about it. Because, like I said, I was scared to go. I just yeah. I just ended up doing it because I was rapping. I'm like, all right, well, this is what you got to do. Right. So, that next week, the, the main promoter who did it, his son, who I said was my age, he had a brand new car. I from your show, I ain't on. It was my birthday, but yeah, from that event. Yeah, it was from other that event. Yeah, too, yeah, but yeah, yeah from sure. that event. Yeah. So I couldn't help but think, like, damn, damn. You know what I'm saying? And one, then one, I, of them, one of them things is like, even if you ain't even a hater, you low key gonna hate. Like, damn, they got a brand new car. Nah, it wasn't even hate. It was just kind of like, how can I get that? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. wasn't even hate. It was just yeah. like the light bulb had and cut on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, I was there. I was there. I could have did that shit too. I could have got the quit too. Exactly. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, well, if I just do it by myself or if I just do it with maybe one other person. Right. So I have a car in a couple weeks too. <laughs> shit. I, I, I actually did. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, I don't remember how far or soon it was after that, but eventually I did end up buying another car. So, yeah, it worked out. But, that's how it all started. And then eventually, like I say, about it, maybe about a year into it, I was a kid, bro. So I think I paid a DJ the first time. Like, man, I paid this nigga a lot of money, man. Yeah. Like, made the... like, man, fuck, I'm finna DJ. Because I, I was the iPod king. Yeah, yeah. iPod crazy. And they ended up making this little setup where you could plug up an iPod and it had like two little turntables. It was only like... Like this big, it was a real small, put two fingers on it. <laughs> yeah. But you could use the iPod though, and I had so many songs on my iPod, so I was just like, I called Quest, I'm like, hey man, we could do da We just took it from there. Man, I'm gonna tell you this every party I went to, every motherfucking I, party I, I went to. I that iPod. Nah, ain't no way, bro. Ain't <laughs> a no lot way, of them probably dog. is, bro. <laughs> dog. A lot of them probably is. You went crazy. A lot of them probably I don't have part, bro. not one bad review about this nigga. Uh, like, it was either iPod or CDs. It was still using CDs back then. That's it was crazy. Had no laptop. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. That's great. I commend you, dog. I commend you. I appreciate you. y'all, Because, nigga, man. that bitch used to be rocking. Rocking. Yeah. Did you, you eventually move it on to, like, turntables and whatnot? So, turntables was always around, but, so you got a turntable and then you got something called a CDJ. Yeah. So, a CDJ is basically a digital version of a turntable. Mm -hmm. It's not as big. You don't use a, a record, mm. but it has something like that on there, and you put a CD into it, and you basically scratch just like you would. It has like a dummy CD in there that mm -hmm. acts like a turntable, and you scratch on it. Yeah. Makes similar sounds. Not the same sound, but similar sounds. So I prefer a CDJ just because by the time I came around, it wasn't that many people using turntables like that. Yeah. I think y'all Q45. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Q45 is the only like I don't want to say only in me disrespect because I know a lot of these, right. but he's one of the one of the only ones that I can know of, that I know of on top of my head who just solely use. Turntables. He, I yeah. think he's still using turntables right now. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I I remember, everybody by now done converted. Yeah. I remember when he used to uh, host on Rap City. Like, he used to start off each episode with like a DJ Fast. set on a turntable. Fast. And I'll just remember that. He nasty. Yeah. I got to shout nasty. out my nigga DJ Shotgun. I know he's still using. Um, Man, um, shot. 
See, bro. that's why I said. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, I said. Yeah, yeah. I said, bro. Cause shotgun I got an OG. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey. Oh, my bad, shotgun. Nah, nah, nah. I, I mess with shotgun. That's nah, why I said what yeah, I said. Yeah, yeah, for real, for real. You definitely gave a great, like, bro. You covered every step. You know what I mean? Uh, but shotgun definitely helped the nigga out, and I want to give him all praise. You know what I'm saying? He gave, he gave a nigga shotgun. crazy looks. Shout One out to really. DJ Capone too. Hey, yeah. Uh, Shout out DJ Capone. DJ oh. Capone is bad. Why you bring that up? I'm gonna put you on the spot. If you had to do like a Mount Rushmore or Jacksonville DJs, who would be on it? Mm. That's a great question. Yeah. Yeah, I commend you for that. <laughs> That's a great question. I know it's going to be a tough question. Hopefully, we, nobody. We're talking about just DJs, right? We're yeah, not talking DJ. about Mike Men, right? DJs. Just DJs. Just straight DJs. Just straight record playoffs. Yes, sir. All right. Q45 definitely on the Mount Rushmore. Definitely. Definitely. Um, I got to go Hollywood Shane. Okay. Now, a lot of people, I'm not even going to say a lot of people. Some people might not know Hollywood Shane, but Hollywood Shane is basically the record player for a big ranking. Okay. He was a big ranking for the majority of the Cool Runner era. Okay. Um, so, yeah. bigger ranking, I'm going to say Kool Aid, DJ Kool Aid. Shout out Kool Aid. Um, Mount Rushmore. I got to put myself on there. I can put myself on there. Definitely. We're not doing Definitely. my. I'm, we're not doing myself. You do, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I got to be on there, man. That's four, right? Yeah, that's four for Mount that's Rushmore. That's tough, bro. Mount Rushmore just four. That's oh, but it's just four. It's just four. Oh, Mount I thought Rushmore. it was five. Nah, that's four. Okay, well, if you want to put an honorable mention in, throw an honorable mention in. Definitely. Okay, okay. I didn't know. I thought it was five. Dang. Let me do that again. Q45, myself. Shane is a legend, man. I got still got to say Shane. And. God, there's so many DJs. Yeah, it I mean, really y'all gonna have really me, is. man. Y'all gonna have me in trouble, man. Nah, yeah, man. Kool, I mean, Kool Aid, not bad. Nah, I gotta. I guess I gotta go. Yeah, yeah. I say Kool Aid slash Select the J. Okay. And, and and the reason I say that is because they they both in Cool Runners. Really, Shane, Kool Aid, myself, Select the J, all Cool Running DJs, and I can't really, I can't really. You know what I'm saying? Leave one out and not and put one in. Them right, the three, right. them the three that I play with the most. So them gonna be my, yeah. Them gonna be my, yeah. Now honorable mention. It's a lot of honorable mention, but as far as just playing records, because a lot of people they popping off other things, right, like right. maybe talking on the mic or maybe they on the internet big. Or, but yeah. if we talking about just getting down and dirty, yeah. Honorable mention, swag. Um, that's a great one. Honorable mention. It's a lot of good DJs. Shout out to Money Good. Um, it's a lot. Yeah. I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna get them boys. They flowers though. For yeah. sure, sure, for sure. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, I know. So you probably gonna for it's hard. Bro, because you know I've been around so long, so it's yeah, like right, right, when right, I, when, right. I, when people when they see it, they be like, dude, go. Yeah, like, niggas can't get mad if you broke bread with them. Then you obviously fast, you fuck with them. So fast, 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 yeah. fast, fast, fast. I had to, I had to shake the table with that on the top of that. That was a tough one. That was, that a tough was a, one. yeah, that was a tough one. I don't think I've been asked that before. People might ask who my favorite is, but they don't. They don't. I ain't never got the Mount Rushmore before. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm gonna ask you this, man. Um, if you had to give us your favorite year that you were DJing, that's tough, boy. I done had some great years. Ooh, I done had some great years, bro. Cause it go, it go like this. Right, right. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm gonna get y'all two. Right. I'm gonna say two thousand and nine. Okay. That was the year I graduated. Yeah. High school. Yeah. Uh, great year. So Amazing that was kinda year. Like, Amazing year, nigga. Yeah, that was like the for me. That was the transition from teen to. to Adult club, adult and club, yep, and yep. college shit. Yep, you know what I'm saying. But yep. I was still doing both. Yeah, because I was right. th- of age. Right. So great year. Yeah. Uh, later on, I would probably say probably like twelve. Okay. I was at fam doing the same thing. Yeah. But it was college, so it was just on another level because everybody from somewhere different. So. And I wasn't from there. Right. 
we just with a whole we doing the same thing again that we just did in 09, but it's just with a whole nother crowd of people. Right. Yeah. Right. A lot more too. Yeah. Yeah. Like minded and everything, yeah. Yeah. Same age. Yeah. Everybody up there about the same age. So it was just a little more intense because you know, Jacksonville big. You know, we do team parties, but it's adults, it's it's, it's 100%, kids. Yeah. It's, but uh there we was in Tallahassee. It's just like the majority of people are between this age range right mm-hmm. here. And they're up here for this particular thing. So one hundred percent. It's easy to target. It, yeah, yeah, all of that. It was just yeah, it was different. It was different. That's yeah. what's up. You born and raised in Jacksonville? For sure. That's what's up. For sure, for sure. Y'all? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, definitely. Born in Pensacola, you know what I'm saying? Uh, been here, you know, since I was like 10. So, Y'all ever lived anywhere else? Yeah, North Carolina. I lived in Jacksonville the rest, whole, my, my whole life. I travel a lot, so that kind of like... It kind of offset it. Yeah. I tell people that all the time, though. Like, people be saying, like, you know you get on the ground and be like, oh, you get to Jacksonville, Slender, but they never been nowhere else. Yeah. It's kind of like, well, bro, you travel, like, you're, you're itch to maybe live somewhere else. It's probably not as... Yeah, it's big. Right, right. In and out of town all the time. It 100%. doesn't really. It don't. It don't. It don't necessarily. If you don't have a day to day that's local, then it definitely, you know, don't don't factor as much. Yeah, I love living in Jacksonville. All I need is like two, th- two or three trips out of the, the state. I'm yeah, good. and I think I think the more you travel, the more you learn to appreciate where you're from. For Definitely. for whatever reasons that that might be. 100%. Yeah. Now, I will say this. So, I lived in uh, North Carolina for five years, and I loved it. What like I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I appreciate it now. What, what you know part? what I'm saying? Uh, the Triangle. So, I lived in Raleigh, Durham, and Cary. Okay. okay. I moved up to Cary, moved to um, Durham, and then I ended in Raleigh. You know okay. what I'm saying? But... Um, up there, that like that triangle area is like making a trip to Orange Park. Yeah, you know what for I'm sure. saying. So, for me, you get to experience three different, you know, realistically three different cities. Yeah, and that's culturally, that's that's geographically, all mm-hmm. of that, right? Yeah. But uh, in in a, a thirty minute ride. That was cool to me. You know what I'm saying. Um, another thing that I did love about it was like, especially appreciating it now that I'm here. You know, looking back, hindsight, 2020 type shit. Right? You do get the season, so it was cool to be able to see snow up there. You don't get snow as heavy as a lot of places. It comes and goes really quick, so it's bearable. It is cold as fuck. That that took a lot of getting used to. Like our our lowest is cold, uh, 40, right? All right. And we might feel that like two, three days out of a mm-hmm. month or something like that. You know what I mean? But it they, ain't really. But they got forty up there, but it's, it's not the same forty. It as ain't here. the same forty. Nah. nah, in no way, shape, or form. Nah. You, you you need a, a trench. You know what I'm saying? And they forty. Yeah. You feel like like for me, ignorant as fuck. It's like damn, it's been yeah. a snow today. Fast. You know? <laughs> Fast. I live somewhere else too, around the, the. I live in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, the weather, man. Not a fan. It's not the worst thing in the world. I'm not I'm not gonna be dramatic about it. But if you just asking me like my opinion based on where I'm from. I don't fuck it, with cold weather either. I don't so like I respect cold. it. A, yeah. And I didn't yeah. know I had a hint towards it when I was in Tallahassee because I guess the elevation is different. They have way bigger hills right, and right. stuff. It's not flat and we not yeah. they not close to the water like we are. So I got a whiff of it when we was up there in Tally, but it was kind of like, hey, man, we still in Florida. Mm-hmm. But when I got to Atlanta, it was just a whole different breed of cold, and I just was never a fan of it. So, and when it get cold, it stay cold. It's not like yeah, Florida exactly, where it be yeah. cold for a week. And exactly. Then, nah, when it's cold, it's just cold. That's one thing that, like I say, took a lot of getting used to. Um, I think the thing for me in, it, in uh, North Carolina was, like, I got comfortable with bundling. You know what I'm saying? Like... A nigga have on long johns, a tank top, mm-hmm. motherfucking sweater, mm-hmm. two pair of sweatpants that you uh, like, nigga, bullshit. no bullshit. I was working in an office and I wore <coughs> sweatpants under my slacks one time. You know what I'm saying? For like a week, bro. I was like, yo, it's too fucking cold. Nigga said I look like the uh the little Michelin man because the slacks was like, <laughs> you know, if they- it's cold, bro, I don't I don't really be worried about fashion. 
I'm just oh, worried about no. getting warm, bro. Nigga, that's all I can think about. I told him every day, shit, I'm I'm comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Nigga had the scarf, the motherfucking top hat, everything, bro. Yeah, I get my fashion only go to a certain <laughs> temperature. If I gotta do all that, I ain't I ain't fading with it, bro. That's why I'm staying in Florida. Uh, shit, hey, yeah. when is when is get when is get crazy up there though? If you know I what move, I'm gonna stay. Wise, if I move, it's gonna be somewhere in, in Florida. Florida. Yeah. You could still you could still be on some chill shit to go crazy fashion wise up there. You know I said that too. You know where else I move though? Where? That's that's like preferable temperature. I moved to Texas, but like. Southern, mm -hmm. close to the water. Now, Texas get too hot sometimes. It do get too hot, but I think if you're close to the water, you might be okay. Yeah. And then I think if I got the pick, I'd rather go where it's too hot than where it's too uh -huh. cold. Me personally. See, I think I'm more of a nomad in the sense I'd be I open to just going anywhere, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Just, yeah. just randomly traveling type shit. And not to say I want to live in some bum fuck mm -hmm. place, you know yeah. what I mean? But like, but you visit, yeah. Like, let's say a nigga was like, "Hey, here go." Every reason is justifiable. That's all I need, right? It's justifiable. I probably move to like a Seattle, a Phoenix. You know what I mean? Like a. a I heard Phoenix turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah for real. Too. I heard Phoenix turn. Like I love to visit. Uh, Denver and see what that's like. You know what I mean. Yeah. I know a nigga that lived up there. He was like, "Yo, I'm never coming back." Mm. He did move back, but that's more on some personal mm -hmm. shit. But um, I say it to say, like, bro, for a nigga to 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 even have that inkling of a thought at any point, yeah, right, is enough to say, "Shit, I love it might to be check worth it the out." Try. You know what I mean? For sure, um, I be feeling like that too. Yeah, Especially so. if it's somebody that I know. Or somebody that, you know, we got some kind of rapport with each other. Right. I'm like, well, hmm. If my boy like it, like, what I wonder what yeah. he, what he, you know, now my boy into some weird shit, then right. I, I might understand that too. But if it's kind of like one yeah. of, you know, my closest people is like, hmm. Yeah, we all got, I, I got Tim a couple of times. We all got the homie that moved somewhere, but like, hey, bro, come out here with me and shit. Yeah, bro, yeah. Chill on the couch for a little bit. Boy, that nigga tried to recruit me to the Marines. Oh, hell no. Nah. Like, you know, I don't want to let that. To the Marine, to the military? To the military. I think, nah, I, I, I got nah. a friend like that. Yeah. It went hard though, but it was like, well, you never thought about the military. I ain't gonna lie, that nigga <laughs> doing amazing right now. Like that nigga every My year, too. that nigga goes and does like three to six month contracts that yeah. be paying a hundred thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? It's just off his training type shit. But um, that nigga be in like Saudi Arabia, all kinds of places, right? Yeah. Um, he was like, man, come, come, pause. <laughs> you know, come with, <laughs> come with me to the Marines, cause bruh, it's gonna change. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be a game changer type yeah. shit, right? I'm like, man, I ain't gonna sit there and let them crackers yell in my face like that. Oh, I shit. know you seen them commercials. They trying to get that bonus. So you, you sign yeah, on, yeah, they'll yeah, get that. Yeah. Well, no, both of you get the bonus. Like, it's thing. actually a decent, yeah, cool. you know, if you if that's the route you want to go, yeah. you know what I mean? They right. do make it sweet for you. Both of you, you know, level up when you when you sign up, All right? Go in like a it, E3 I think it's just shit. like Anything else Like if you go into it With a mind friend Like hey this is what I'm doing Yeah Then it's gonna work for you For sure I think it only Maybe not work for you When you go into it Maybe for the wrong reasons 100% For the wrong reasons Or bucking against it You know what I mean right. Like a lot of people Even when you get a job You know what I mean A lot of people Get that job And be like Man look I got it Nah I, don't, I, mm -hmm. I ain't really You know mm -hmm. I, I'm worth more than this $15 they finna pay me type shit. You know right. what I mean? And when you go against, go in with that mindset, fuck you up. Definitely. Yeah. So what made you move around? Like DJ in there? You uh, see the scene? Tallahassee was for college. That makes so sense. I was, I was there for some years. Uh, and then Atlanta was, I was managing an uh, artist. Okay. So uh, artists ended up moving to Atlanta. Mm. And... It just made sense for me to be the on the day to day. Man, you managing somebody I fuck with heavy, man. Skeet McFlurry, bro. That nigga be the fire. Yeah. Shout out to Skeet, man. Yeah, yeah for sure, sure. Shout out to Skeet. Oh, cool. We gotta get him on the pod, man. So I think he I think when I came the first time, was it with him? Because uh, I was here one time before, but I can't He probably was. I yeah. think I was. Yeah. I right. think I was. I know you did your pod out here one time. I did do the pod out here one time, but I think I came. Yeah, the first time he was on the first time. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I think I put my head in, and he was a. Uh, yeah. But yeah, man. How, how long y'all been doing the podcast? Shit. Yeah. That was a minute ago. Was this nine years now? Yeah, we've been doing a pod nine years, but we only had this studio probably about three years at three the most. Years. Okay. 
So that might have been maybe within y'all first year that Brett came. Yeah. That's not right. Uh, yeah. Uh, not last year. Uh, Hariana, Hariana, he only been doing creeping about a year. Oh, okay, okay. Because so, yeah. I know um, uh, what you call used to always. Uh, um, I'm forgetting his name now. Nah. Who? Uh, the cracker. That, uh, what's his name? Man? Tino? Tino. Tino Bands, baby. Tino Bands. Tino Bands, baby. For sure. I know they fuck with each other heavy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or they Shout out to Tino. I met Tino at. Um, Tino came to uh, Artist Showcase. Yeah. Um, that I had like a year or two ago. Okay. Did good. Yeah. I hope Tino straight. I haven't seen I Tino. So, I hope so, man. Uh, I don't know how to get in touch with Tino Bands. I ain't heard from him in a minute, but shout out to Tino, though. Yeah, for sure, sure. Yeah, he used to be up here all the time, and he just disappeared. We ain't see him again. Hopefully, he's straight, man. Uh-huh. Wherever he at, man. Uh-huh. But uh, let's get into the show, man, for real. So, so we're going to do voicemails. The send in voicemails. Hit us up 424 260 RAOP. That's 424 260 RAOP. We got three of them this week. Yo, it's Zell from Five Four Bottles. Uh, I heard Ant tell the other homeboy that he only left like eight or nine messages and he needed to get them numbers up. I know I only left one, so I'm just here to try to get my numbers up. I ain't really got no questions. I just want to do my part and add, listen to questions. Well, damn, I just said I ain't got no questions. And I'm talking about <laughs> questions but I just want to leave a voicemail so I can do my part. Uh... All I got to tell y'all for real is join the Patreon because the extra content is definitely worth it. It's going to help you get you through your day. You get not only audio recordings, but video recordings as well if you join that $25 and up tier, which I believe you should do if you haven't already. Plus, you get to jump in the Discord. So, in order for me to do my part and add some substance to this, lovely podcast that y'all got here. I'm going to go ahead and use my expertise and help y'all out. Because I know a bunch of y'all that probably already done bought that $90 Beyonce whiskey for your old lady or for yourself. And y'all don't really fuck with raw whiskey like that, so you don't Thanks like it. Sure, you don't know what to do with. Bro, this is a mixtape intro. Point, <laughs> get yourself some apple crown, get some apple juice. Mix them two together, pour some of that Beyonce whiskey in there, and maybe a little bit of ginger ale. Bam, body that bottle, don't never get him another $90. That part right now, that's the intro. What bottles you can get that might cost less or up to $90, hop in a Patreon so you can hop in the Discord, ask me there, and I'll give you your answer there. Mm. Mm. Shout out to my nigga B Dot. He drank a lot like me, so I know he's a good man. <laughs> Keep up the good work, fellas. I'll holler at y'all later. Hey, Friend, man. Nigga. Shout out Zell, a.k.a. Body More Bottles for That's that voice. That's a hard plug, man. For real, yeah, for yeah. real. Hey, man. y'all definitely tap in with him at Body More Bottles on everything. He give y'all all the plugs on how to how to mix your liquor, uh, make perfect drinks, things like that. It so, uh, Body More Bottles. Body More Bottles. I'm going to yeah. check him out. I started doing the uh, drink reviews. Uh, there you go. Yeah, he just Not did one on the, on the Beyonce. Uh, what is it? <laughs> is it? I don't know. I, I didn't even know she in. had a whiskey. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. Yo, whiskey. Yeah, she. Yeah, she dropped. It's called Sir Davis. I don't drink. Sir it, Davis. It, it, it costs a pretty penny. It's ninety a bottle. So ninety. Nah. No. Yeah, it's ninety a bottle, man. No. Hey, man. What's the best tequila you ever had? Why are we right there? Damn, best tequila. You too. Hmm. Uh, Casamigos. The Ooh. best. I ain't had. I ain't had that many. Hey, I gotta bring me back, and I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna bring all the gift. All right. I should have brought it today. I can't. I it's all good. I can't even tell you. See, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm basic. You know what I'm saying? Not the liquor well, store type me. shit. So, it. It was basic. um, I What's mean, of go-to? course, I've had go to as far as tequila. Mm-hmm. As far as tequila, I mean, every time I'm probably gonna choose. I don't know. I start with a Patron. I go with a. a I like this Luna Zool a lot. I've been on this sure. heavy lately. Uh, a nigga bought it for my birthday. My, shout out to my dog, Jay Go Crazy. Um, and I've been on that since. Uh, but. Mind if I get another split? Yeah, bro. I was actually about to post something myself. Um, I'm trying to think. My best. I don't know, man. I have to come back to that. What, what would you say? 
So I'm gonna actually give y'all some game. And y'all probably already know this, but for the people who are watching, they might not know this. So y'all know tequila mainly coming three grades. Mm -hmm. So you got uh, Blanco, you got Reposado, mm -hmm. then you got Anejo. Mm -hmm. And then they got some others like extra Anejo, extra Reposado. They got some other ones after that, but um, those are the main three. So right there, what you got, that's the Reposado. We'll call that level two. Mm. Level one would be like Blanco. That's like the one that they age the least. Or we're mainly going to be like the cheapest grade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be the silver or Blanco. Then you go, you got a Reposado level two. And then you go at number three, you got Anejo. Mm -hmm. So I got a favorite in each, in okay. each grade. Reposado, that's usually brown, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be like, like that tint color. right there. Okay. The Anejo probably going to be a little, a little, like a little darker than that. Yeah. Um, I think I had a Reposado with, uh, what's that, SB alone? Great choice. That's a good one. It's a great choice when you, I don't want to say on a budget, but if you just not really trying to spend a lot, you just want to drink something good, Yeah, that's a great one. I mm -hmm. like that. I like Malago too. Okay. Malago, it's not bad. It's not bad. I yeah. had it. Uh, well, the Resposado. Yeah, 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 yeah. Resposado. And the Anejo. Um, I had it at uh, some young nigga. Um, Shout out to my dog Willie Rex, man. Willie Rex, uh, I know Willie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willie Rex turned up the spot one night, and um, he was like, "Hey, man, just buy a bunch of Malago." <laughs> Not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Not so, a bad idea because at the end of the day, it's reputable. It's not a bad taste in tequila, mm -hmm. and it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. So if you want to buy a big bottle a and get two, two, two fills or whatever, you're yeah. not you probably spending sixty bucks. And that's a win. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. But I guess my favorite though is something called uh, tequila ocho. Okay. Mm. And then I have one more. It's called Lalo. Yeah. Ain't but never next heard time, neither. Yeah, next time I come, we're gonna bring. I'm gonna bring something on the show that I like that I have y'all try, and then y'all tell me. Cause the the truth of the matter is, whatever they sell, like I probably shouldn't say this. Whatever they sell in the club is not gonna be good tequila, or really probably any any liquor. But so it's like watered down or something. Or not, it not ain't even, even the, that. It's cheap. It's it, it's just gonna be not of quality. It's right gonna on. be. Probably what people ask for, which mm -hmm. a lot of time ain't the most quality thing. Yeah. Or it's gonna be what fit the budget the most. Yeah. So it's gonna be like, or well, is it gonna be like? I know everybody drinking the Don Julio right now, so. So they gonna have the Don. They gonna yeah. have Patron. Yeah. They gonna have Casamigos. Yeah. And they, they gonna, gonna taste the fuck out of that shit. I feel like everybody drink just like whatever popular. They don't really that's know exactly. what the fuck. That's that exactly. all it is. Yeah. Exactly. That's all it is. But bro. the truth of the matter, we just talking about just tequila. <clears throat> Yeah. Them like some of the lowest on the totem pole of yeah. tasting tequilas. You know 100%, what I'm saying? 100%. Them, them, those would be like the Toyota cameras of cars. Yeah. Like so, it's a yeah. it's a it's a nice car if, if that's what you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? But if we just talking about cars, well no, nah, you still got BMWs and Mercedes and oh, yeah, Lexus definitely, definitely, and, definitely. and, and so, See y'all don't drink a lot, so like when you ask me what tequila, I just mm -hmm. know I I like Casamigos and SP alone because like that's what it you gets had, you it gets you yeah. right. It, it, yeah, that's what I had. It gets you right and I I wake up with no hangover. So that's the big part. That's one of the main reasons I like tequila. You know what I'm saying? Like you wake up and you 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 pretty good. I had one night, man, I was so drunk, I had no like control over my neck pause like <laughs> <laughs> that shit that was crazy Boy. um but like i legit couldn't hold my head like i got in the car with this chick she was she was driving me <laughs> me home like my nigga had parked somewhere so we rode over to um to this chick crib or whatever and he left his car but she was coming back to my shit you know what i'm saying so she was driving him to his car. I got in that shit, buckled the seatbelt. Oh, he didn't have some night. Bruh, my shit's... <laughs> he didn't have some night. <laughs> oh, fuck, bruh. I mess with tequila, bruh. You life. know, that's kind of <laughs> like one of the... It's all dirty now, but it's one of the cleanest liquors you can drink. 100%. It got 100%. like... Don't quote me, but it have, it's one of the liquors that has the least amount of sugar in it. Yeah. I know Cognac, I think, got the most. I know a lot of the darker liquors... 
They got a lot of sugar in it. Yeah, them. we used to promote Crown Royal heavy on this podcast. Probably got a lot of sugar in it. Nigga, them. Crown Royal, that yeah. shit no good, man. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really that, all, all that sugar in it, like you said. Yeah, I ain't bougie now, don't get me wrong. I'm in, I'm out a lot, so if y'all boys come to the club, y'all boys buy a bottle of me or something like that, I'll take a shot with y'all, but I'm not buying I'm not really gonna buy no brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect that, I respect that. Yeah. Oh yeah, really. You think you don't buy no brown? I'm not gonna buy it. I drink it. I'm not <coughs> bougie now. I don't get it wrong. No, 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 no. I respect yeah, that. You don't turn your nose. Yeah, yeah. Personally, I prefer I f- brown. You prefer brown? I like, I'm like, a star brown. Yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. niggas turning their nose up at Everclear. If a nigga pull out a bottle of Everclear, you drinking it? Nah, around, yeah. Or a fireball? Really? I don't really drink vodka. vodka. I don't drink vodka. <laughs> yeah, like, I took a shot with some niggas of vodka, like. That's wine no shit. Probably like two, three months. And... This got to be longer than that. I took a shot of some vodka, you know, within mm. the year, mm. and I was like, "Lord, nah. hey, deter me nah. next I'm time." Good. <laughs> like, I'm good, man. I'm good on that. I'm on still that laughing vodka. at this nigga say he couldn't control the neck, bro. That's crazy, bro, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, bro, I had bruh, that's no crazy. Bro. I had no muscles, like no <laughs> muscles. <laughs> that is, bro. That's a oh my god, it was unfortunate. <laughs> Dog, that nigga, it was with Russell, matter of fact. That nigga asked me, he was like, bro, you gonna be good? <laughs> and roll that bit up. Like, bro, I hope so. <laughs> nah, man. I ain't gonna lie, Shorty's a kid, nigga, that night. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, the embarrassment still stings. Oh, my God. It be like that sometimes. It be like that sometimes. But it be, sometimes when you got on stories like that, and, and it was people around to see, sometimes it be a good... It just be a good memory, good, bring yeah, up. yeah, for it sure. It's a good time, you like know what I'm dog. I'm gonna tell you what, man. I'm uh, what? Damn, I almost said I'm way younger than I am. I'm 34 now, but um, it's one of those things to where nigga done lived a life, Facts. bro. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And you done seen every facet in 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 so many different ways now to where it's like, I right, some of the shit that I'm I'm like holding on to. And that shit for jokes, you know what I mean? Like that's real. That shit way in my past, you know what I mean? The nigga it. can't tell, and I dare nigga to try me about it type shit, you know what I mean? So Fact. it's like, yeah, yeah. we laugh at that shit, you know. <laughs> but you know, I don't took. That's bills. what life about. That's what life about. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's what it. life about. It. You live and you learn, and you know, uh, what you hope is the stuff that you learn. Why you were learning it later on, you can laugh about it. That's Hopefully it, man. It is yeah. That's the biggest the thing that I'm up, thankful for. Yeah, that you can laugh about. Yeah, like, like, bro, bro, you ain't still doing the same shit from back in the day. Straight up, yeah. straight up, Fact. straight up. Um, shout out to my nigga Earl. My nigga Earl told me once, boy, I was about to black out somewhere one time. But that nigga was like, hey, man, you ain't that nigga no more. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. <laughs> like, but that's a good friend, though. Right? Yeah, definitely. That's a good friend. Yeah. Man, shout out to her. That's a good friend. And like I say, shit, that's one of the blessings of the podcast. That's one of the blessings of, you know what I mean? Like, just work, you know, consistent work ethic type shit. Um, being able to develop those friendships over the years. Like, even some of the DJs you shouted out, you know what I mean? It's it's a reminder that, you know, you do something, like just going back to the whole age, living the life thing, right? You Fact. do something for so long. You, do, you live for so long mm-hmm. that... Man, you brush shoulders with people that impact you in ways you never would have imagined had you stayed in your bubble type shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, when I left, uh, shit, before I moved to North Carolina, I moved back to Pensacola for a year. And um, when I left, I remember this nigga Amp was joking about it. Like, nigga, what's in Pensacola? <laughs> <laughs> I still say that. Shut yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. I had a homie who went out there, and I be, I be clowning on him. Shout out to Jeezy, man. But I be clowning him about that, too. Like, like, bro, why do you be... No. Is it Pensacola? No, no, no. Where's Club La Vila? That's in Panama, yeah. Pensacola. Pensacola. That's in Panama. Yeah, so it is yeah, Pensacola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you yeah, know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah, okay, so that. yeah. So yeah, he be going out there and I be like, bro, like, La Villa, bro, yeah. he be going out there, man. Like, what, like I want, you know, Tallahassee right there. Mm-hmm. So for spring break, we used to be going out there. Mm-hmm. But ever since then, I just be like, bro, like, like bro, just be hanging sometimes. I be like, bro, he be like, man, it be a vibe. I be I'm, like, 
it's just a slower pace. You it know is. what I mean? It's a lot chiller. So, you know, whatever you enjoy, you can enjoy that shit with no thought. You know what I mean? Fresh. Like, Fresh. here, it's a, it's a big city. You can get distracted by a lot. Pensacola, man, you mm-hmm. can go down there and make bread. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Do that's, whatever. That's you. really what he be doing. Mm-hmm. That's really what he be doing. He be going out there to make some money, but he just go, he go so much, it just be kind of like, like, bro, you kind of like it down there. <laughs> oh, nah, it's, it's a vibe for sure, for yeah. sure. Like, once you find the spots and, like, shit to actually get into, you know, find what fits you type shit, bro, it's a lot you can do in Pensacola. Speaking of what fits you, I got two things. Mm-hmm. So the first thing is I apologize. I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. Both of y'all got on hats. My plan today was to bring y'all two hats from a clothing brand. Come on, man. Matter of fact, they're on my kitchen counter. Sorry, if I ain't man. mistaken, I think I did a rug for your brand, matter of fact. You did uh, one for me? Yeah, probably like. Spruce Life, right? Yeah, yeah probably Spruce like life. two years ago. You did one? If I, I came ain't and mistaken. Got it? Nah, somebody ordered it for you. Ah. Got gotcha. you. It was like. It was it's like, black and white? Yep. Got gotcha. you. Yep. For yep. sure. Yep. I still got it. <laughs> but I need to clean it. I just Shit. actually, I just move, I just move. So I'm just trying to like, I need to clean it though. But I need to get it. I, 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 ain't even I need to get another one. Yeah, I got plenty of logos. So oh. I, I got another yeah. one in mind I really want to do. I got like a little man cave. I'm trying to do a man cave thing. Shit, I 3D printed all of that, man. We can get you, you right. You got 3D printed too? Yeah, a, a, a few. Nah, so you can make little, little toys. Whatever you need. I ain't, we ain't got no figures over here, in that matter of fact. What like, you done made, huh? I uh, mess with the cars. I just don't. I, had, uh, I don't know how I got popping though. Like, I like them though, but I just don't know the. I don't oh, know I got, the backstory. I got like two and a half foot, three four. I like foot them though, and I kind of want one, but I just don't know. Like, you know what I? You know what actually I'm into now? Huh? Y'all ever heard of pops? Yeah, yeah. You know about pops? You know yeah. about pops? You talking about like Funko pops? Yeah. Yeah, like the ones behind, like behind yeah. you. Yeah. Oh yeah, I ain't even. Yeah, I ain't even see my boy Stone Cold. And then I got a rock. Who this shit right here? The Ultimate Warrior. Ultimate. That's hard. Yeah. Man, That's shit. Hard. Bro, Look, we could do so much to, crazy um, shit. Bro. We could turn your Sploosh Life logo into a damn bro. ashtray, to a damn 3D print that can stand on the table. All kinds it's of crazy, shit. It's crazy, bro. Because I got, a, I got like, uh, so I got plenty of logos, but like, we're going to like have like an animal, mm. like our official animal. Yeah. It's gonna be a panda. Mm. So I actually got a quote that I got like two, three days ago from somebody on Instagram who was just soliciting, and they sent me a quote for a three D print. It's crazy that that you do that. That's crazy. But yeah, you know we gonna shop local. We're gonna go Definitely. who we know. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with who we don't know. Come on. Yeah. Well, we're going to start with who we know. Hey. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do it like that. But I definitely need that rug. 100%. I you know I got you. Sure. You know I got you. But yeah, that's the first thing. So the hats. I was supposed to bring you guys some hats. And then um, what fit you? You When I walked in, you guys was talking about college basketball. Now, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Unk uh, uh, ain't really on the college basketball. Unk <laughs> uh, be on the college football. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Y'all got, y'all got a team? Oh yeah, college football, FSU. I don't, I don't, I don't really like. You're a good man, and you know what? When I walked in and you came you out and checked on me, I mean, you something you, in your eye told me. I said, man, this man is noble. Novels? I say this man is because I see where you going with it. Yeah. This man is noble. <laughs> This man is responsible. No, this man is this hurt. Man this man hurting. hurting. This Bruh. man is hurting. We, we but, ass? but he knows what he wants in life, Bruh. and he's at exactly. heart a good dude. I don't even fuck with neither one of y'all niggas right I now. I know you don't. And We're that's why I'm focusing on thirty him seconds. And his character. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just be silent. All right, hold on. Starting and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a little moment of silence for this year. I'm gonna be silent with you because. I don't know what's going on. I know, oh, I know what's going I'm on. I, hey man, I, the quarterback just asked DJ, you asked. Bro, I don't think Martin Novell is who we thought he was, and I'm gonna go on record and say that. I think Martin Novell is a product of Jordan Travis. Mm, definitely, I agree with that. I think Martin Novell is a product of Jordan Travis, Keon Coleman, Jerry Verse, yeah, Jermaine Johnson, definitely. and Johnny Wilson. Definitely, yeah. He just had good quarterbacks, yeah. My thirty seconds. You had some good. You had some. The, de- the defense got defense kind of ass this year. Too. Hey, y'all niggas is booty at boy. Y'all niggas is butt cheeks, okay. and I can say that because <coughs> we ass, but we ain't ass ass. Nah, I don't. It's two y'all. butt cheeks on the same ass. <laughs> no, it ain't. You sound like a Florida. Fan. No, it ain't. Yeah, I, boy, I see, am. A and Florida you see how fan. I knew hold how on. you was a hold good on, dude. Hold on, hold on. I knew he was a Florida. Fan. Hold on, yeah. it's a thing that I got. 
It's everything about him. He just spew a Florida fan. It, it do, what? bro. It's, it's what they call ooze. Remember ooze? Remember yeah. Ivan ooze? Yeah, Ivan ooze. <laughs> he ooze. He ooze Florida juice, man. Hey, hold on. Ivan ooze was actually a real nigga if you think about it. Like, Ivan ooze. When you go back and look at that, when you go back and look at that a, scene, he was a good ass villain, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, go ahead. Put. I know what you got in your hand. You I got them scores. Put them scores away, man. Put that away, man. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about y'all niggas. Nigga he finna pull something up. He ride the score, bro. I might want to oh talk about that. Oh, my God. He, he prepared. <laughs> so somebody else be killing him for that. He ain't do that for yeah, me. Yeah, that's, that's a... That, that saying, bullet ain't bro. for me, though. I was just saying, yeah, that, bro. That bullet that, is not a, for me, That's a sign of insecurity right that's there, bro. Nah, that's nah, a research hold on, hold on, for somebody hold on, hold on. else. Hold on. Yeah, put I'm that just letting y'all know that, you know... This year we're gonna tack on another win, you know what I mean? We need it actually. It's been a long you know time. What I mean, we need it. It's been a long time. We need it. I should say that. We need it. And y'all haven't went to the national championship in a while. Yeah. I should say we're that. We're not going well. this year, so don't rub it in. You know what I mean? We're not going the next 10 years. Hey, chill one. out, chill out, chill out. We got hope. We're gonna fire this motherfucker. The, I'm waiting for the boosters to y'all kick in. Fired our coach. No, they ain't fired Billy yet. I don't think they ain't fired. Uh-uh, they ain't fired yet. Oh, <laughs> they ain't fired yet. And, but that's going to be why y'all don't win, because y'all still got busy. Bruh, I'm like, dog, we need a motherfucker in there cussing them out right now. They is, but... Nah, they ain't. They, they not. They ain't cussing them out. We need some Let me tell you what it is. Let me tell you what it is. We need some cri- criminals. Let me tell you what it really is. Huh? <laughs> the nigga said we need some criminals. I'm just I'm saying. I'm petitioning. Take. I'm going to give you a hot take. Hmm. Y'all quarterback, DJ Ladway. If Ladway tells administration or, or the powers that be that he fuck with Billy, he, he gonna, gonna keep yeah, Billy. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Regardless of whatever the yep. people think or whatever the people say, because at the end of the day, that's really the only thread y'all riding on right now is Ladway. Well, Florida builds their team around their quarterbacks. And I mean, of course, let, let, that makes sense. But I feel like we've been following a broken model since it left, and that's the Tim Tebow effect. It is. Mm-hmm. Y'all still looking for him? Exactly. Yeah. We looking for him ten times over, and I'm gonna tell you why we're still searching for Tim Tebow. And y'all be letting dudes wear that 15 too. I don't Bro, like that, that is, shit is I, disgusting. Yeah, that is. That, that is, is just. Insane. I'm gonna tell like y'all. Like I say, Florida literally never, on their last thread with nah, me. We would never. We wouldn't. Y'all do niggas that. remember uh, Hercules? Yeah. When they tried to like, when they was about to cut the thread on niggas, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And send them to uh, Hades. Hades. Yeah. Bro, that's how Florida is right now. They riding on that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, the thing is this. One, Tim Tebow has been gone longer than 15 fucking years. Tim Tebow ain't even lead no more, man. At this point, get rid of that 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 imagination that we're going to get that kind of a quarterback again. They're still searching for a Tim Tebow because they let Cam Newton go. I like that. Facts. I, I like yeah. I like on um, Ladway though. I like Ladway. I like I him a know, lot. I don't, I don't know if Billy is the coach that he needs. He to. he's not, and I'm gonna tell you why. One, he's not aggressive enough. He's he doesn't. Florida makes a lot of mistakes early on in every game. Early on, those shouldn't even happen after the second game in the season. It's coach. That's coaching 100. percent He should have been gone. <coughs> to be real. Also, I don't know if y'all niggas realize it, but that NIL shit, that's going to fuck a lot that's of That's been up. fucking us up. That's so, been fucking us it's, up. It's so many schools that pay these niggas so much money, and they're going to forcefully play these niggas, even if they ask. That's what was going on with DJU right now. We paid him so much money. They're like, all right, let's and keep playing. I'm going to tell you another thing going on with us. We paid Mike Novell too early. We had stayed yeah, yeah, too early. Yeah, bro. definitely. Yeah, yeah. Y'all you know what I'm saying? Definitely. And not only did he get his extension, all the assistant coaches got extension. Yeah. I want y'all, I want to use this one as a case study. What Cam Ward is doing down in Miami is about to go down in the books. That nigga to be a senior transfer last what last year? Yeah. And 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 showing out for Miami. A lot of those powerhouse schools that have history but been ass the last ten years type shit. They finna start making comebacks. And it's no longer, I don't think it's no longer. It's been uh, happening this bro. season. Yeah. It's, been, it's been happening. It's been a lot of us this, this season. I don't think it's no longer uh, the thing uh, like Tennessee is 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 a great team this year. Yeah. Fact. Wasn't the last time we seen that? Vince Young? 
Yeah, they had a good team last year. They just didn't do it all the way. Nah, that's real. That's real. They just ain't do it all the way. Um, but I'm 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 just saying it to say nah, you're like, right though. Parody parody gonna look like the money gonna level the parody out because more so than what it's been because it's just been dynasty. Now it's marketing. That too. Cam that too. Ward went to Miami. That realistically, like yeah, last year they had a decent season. And you could definitely see that Miami was turning a new leaf type mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, complete, but to be it was real, a complete one eighty. I ain't see them niggas being this good, bro. bro and that's year, what I was gonna say. They was good last year, bro. It was, they, they was good. They, they, but season they, turn around on one call when Manny Diaz went for it. Mm-hmm. I, it was like the fourth or fifth game. I forgot what game or who they was playing, but he went for it on like on on some crazy. It was just a bad. Mm-hmm. Coaching call, bro. Had kind of like it was saying, bro. Had then kind of lost the locker room after that, mm-hmm. and that's kind of why they went had a little decline towards the end of the year. But they got the talent on the roster, one hundred percent. So I said to say, like today, I think that it again becomes a marketing thing. Oh, I can go to this school and now I become this big name mm-hmm. player yep. because they already have a history. They got an example of it. Yep. But I mean, that's the same model we was using. With the Jerry versus in the in the Jermaine Johnson, like, hey man, if you're an edge rusher, yeah. you can come be this and go and go yep, yep. and go like Jermaine did. One hundred percent, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then we did it again with Jerry Verse. Yeah. So it's kind of like we doing we got the same model. The only thing is with us, we not recruiting at the high school level, and that's this is 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 yeah. rearing his ugly head right now for us. Yeah, they abuse like yeah, we abuse the portal because last year. we ain't really do as good as we normally do in the portal this year. And now when we kind of need to fall back on that high school talent, it's not really there in a, in, yeah. in a couple of key positions. What's been happening for us over the last five years is we do amazing recruiting at the high school level. And then before it's time for them they niggas to actually, flip. bro, be flip. because every year our team has been progressively getting worse. worse. Yeah. yeah. Realistically. You we know gonna what I'm We're going to get that too, though. We actually already been getting it. We yeah. already been getting it. But Florida State, like... One, y'all have a recent enough win to where okay. I mean a uh, uh, championship to where in in Florida you're still reputable to where it's like okay shit if I go to Florida State it's good chance within a four year stretch you Fast. know what I'm saying Fast. Flor uh, like the Gators right now over the last again. Our last championship was in 2007. Our last championship run was in 2007. You get what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. haven't seen a year since to where it's like, yo, these niggas could take us there. Yeah. That's so, why, that why you can't pull out that phone call. Bruh, <laughs> bruh. I know you want to, bruh, bruh. but that's why... You got just some, right now. You got some smudge on All you. I can say is we this. We got smudge on us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, no, no, no. We we in the mud. You know what I mean? Nah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be 100 percent Even Yeah, I know you got slander. Like all our homies is Hurricanes fans. We the only ones that's like not Hurricanes yeah, fans. Yeah. And I think one of our homies, one of our homies that's a Hurricanes fan is probably bullying him. Yeah. And he's taking it out on but, us. That's but at the end of the day, though, <laughs> at the end of the day, you gotta respect it though, because <laughs> when they was down, you probably bullied them. Oh, bro. yeah, I did. So, yeah, I did. So, bro. so you got to respect it. Bro. Especially that year when we beat the Hurricane. That was like two years ago when we beat the Hurricane. They only scored like three points on us. Niggas made bro. sure bro. we ain't played play the Hurricanes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. and then, but they yeah. opened up. You just got to respect it. But that's that's sports, though. That's kind of like, yeah. that's that's the love in it. Like, yeah, we yeah. beat them niggas sometimes like 48 Sometimes in your day, yeah. sometimes in somebody else's day. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, so. Mm-hmm. Damn, man. But uh, back to this voicemail real quick. Shout out to Zell. He was shouting out a Patreon. On a Patreon, we just dropped a classic episode. We got a uh, Patreon only show called Tangent. <laughs> it was it was supposed to be just a B dot and Bank show, but me and Joe kind of took it over also. But man, we had a uh, we had Seek Almighty on there. And if y'all niggas like the Seek Almighty episode from last week, it was the Seek Almighty episode on steroids, man. Oh my god! But we got we got a listener. His name we dropped a clip. I don't know if you seen it on the IG. We got a listener. He's 47 years old, and he hasn't had sex in 17 years. Nah. And, bro, yes. <laughs> he don't want to? No, 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 no. He desperately wants to. He wants to, but he, I don't know, bro. I think, bro, might nah. be addicted. He want to have sex with a porn star. He might be remedial. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. He, so we yeah. trying to, like, coach him and help him out, and he called in. Yeah, that nigga man. said, that nigga said, 
he finds women that's interested in him for the night, but nothing goes further. I said, well, brother, if they interested for the night, get yeah. you some coochie. He said he don't want to have one night stands. He said he want to build a bond with the woman, but I was like, bro. He looking for love. <laughs> that nigga LL. Yeah, yeah, that ain't, and how, I ain't shit talking that ain't how shit work, yeah. man. <laughs> nah. Nah, <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not, but, you know, to each his own. Yeah, man. Yeah. Some things that I know that'll never work for me, I didn't seen work for other dudes. 100%. Like, damn, bro, how you. But. No, 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 no. I'm going to be real. At 17, if you told me. If you came in here and was like, yeah, <laughs> man, I ain't had sex for 17 years. <laughs> we would end this podcast early. Yeah. This would be wrapped <laughs> up right, by right. now. <laughs> right. For sure. Oh, this nigga got some anger somewhere. I would be like, before we get killed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, it's been that. a great time. <laughs> <clears throat> But hey man, he 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 want the advice. We try to help him, but he ain't really listening. But we uh we had him on there. If y'all want to listen to a Patreon, the tangents dot- episode is actually really good. Yeah, that might be the best tangent episode. Patreon.com slash Ario Podcast. Check that out, man. And shout out to Zell again. He sh- he he give y'all the liquor recipes, how to make yeah. drinks and cocktails. Yeah. So you might want to do a review on that as you doing some of your reviews on the Fact. liquor. You know what I mean? You could take one of his recipes, shout him out. You know, cross promotion, but. Fact. Man, look, I'm 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 getting pretty toasted off this Luna Azul, so that's smooth. Yeah, you say yeah, another one. Um, yeah, another voice, man. I got think it's two more. You got two more. Yeah. Uh, two more. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next I, one. I like the first one. Yeah, the first one was he good. Snap. Yo, it's your boy T.J. Willow, man. Hey, listen. Uh, once again, I love y'all, boys, man. Y'all Speaking be doing y'all things, right? Hey, um, I just want to ask y'all, uh. Who is y'all's most overrated wrestler? I'm not sure if y'all ever talked about this or had this topic before, but mm. I was just kind of curious. I may have missed it or whatever. But most overrated wrestler, might as well be, even though he had a good run and it was a good time when he was uh, wrestling, at least in WCW, I would say Bill Goldberg. Um, wow. just cause, like Really, you look at his matches, his matches like one, two minutes long for the most part. Yeah, he had a good run, but he wasn't really that great of a wrestler. So, like I said, man, I love y'all, man. Keep doing y'all thing. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, if he said what's I can't our, agree He said what's our most overrated I'm gonna go Bill Goldberg bro He couldn't really wrestle for real He just came in the ring He did like three moves I mean bro He was big as hell He did What he did This jackhammer Spear Yeah Yeah bro like this, Yeah this that's nigga, really what you waiting fire, bro. Rikishi he was overrated, overrated. Rikishi I don't know Rikishi was doing some shit For his Rikishi weight just, And he from Pensacola Shot him out He had a good gimmick woo, woo, woo. One time for my beat I ain't know from Pensacola yeah. Wait, what? Well, the gimmick? He, he just showed his ass? That's he it. at least lived in He just showed his yeah. ass, bro. Yeah, bro. He wasn't fire, bro. Like, wasn't he just like, throw you in the corner. Show it. They put throw his you ass in the corner. In the face. Face. Yeah, yeah. I forget what that shit was called. Stink face. Yeah, the stink face. Uh, that shit was overrated. <laughs> nah, I'm going mean, to tell, tell you one person I don't like. Who? Hmm. I ain't really like Rian Regal. William Regal? William Regal, re- William Regal was decent. I can respect that, he's but I feel the, like in the, he's not in the overrated box. But I just didn't like him. I feel like William Regal played his role perfectly. Yeah. Now that I'm older, I agree. Into the yeah, as, like, as a kid, though, I, I just didn't like him. I can yeah. respect that 100. percent Like he did what he needed to do. It's an actor. Damn, I can't even think of him off the top of my head. But it's an actor like that. Matter of fact, um, he's playing in Fortnite on Amazon Prime. Uh, the nigga's a ghoul. Uh, he was bruh that wanted to cut the testicles in um, the Django. Oh. The Django. The Django. Um, oh. But the, the white guy. Anyway, you hate these people and then it's like, damn, mm-hmm. you played your role so well. So good. You know what I mean? Maybe not like, like it. Yeah, that Fact. nah, I fuck with you heavy, like, but yeah, I but uh, yeah, William yeah, Regal. Yeah. Also, them. like sometimes niggas don't like the Mac technician dude, the dude that be doing all the extra like moves and arm bars and shit. That shit kind of boring. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. real facts. That's Y'all real. seen uh, Mr. McMahon documentary? Yeah, yeah, I seen that. I ain't, I ain't tapped in yet. It's it pretty hard to me. Yeah, I liked it. My only issue with the Vince McMahon documentary, I ain't really learned much. You like learn like hit shit here and there. But yeah. it, was like, it was like if you tapped in heavy with wrestling, like you ain't really learned much. Facts. I agree. It to be honest, as a fan, it was just something to watch. Yeah. And I think the stuff that I did learn, it was probably more so 
past a certain point after I had to start watching. Mm. Okay, I, I I heard of you, but I didn't know about this because I had, I wasn't watching at that particular time. Yeah. So right. like maybe like CM Punk era yeah. on down, yeah. I wasn't really watching. You know what I'm saying? Or if it was something like prehistoric before mm -hmm. I was born, they may have had like a little fact in there I really didn't know about. Like I didn't know Andre the Giant and the whole Hogan had fought like a gang of times. I thought it yeah. was only like two or three times. Yeah, they were spamming yeah. it. Only thing I learned from that shit, and it also it gave some confirmation. Cause everybody was like saying, because like it was always like some like uh like rumors, like Vince McMahon wanted to do like a program with Stephanie Man where it was like he was like the father of her baby, and it was like never confirmed, but it got confirmed on the dock. Uh, I ain't know Shane McMahon was trying to buy the UFC. And I ain't Vince, know that and Vince either. told him, fuck out of here, nigga. Yeah, I ain't know that either. Yeah. He told him, it's like some shit. They was at the dinner table. He said, yeah, for you to get the money, you got to kill me right now or some shit like that. And he and that's why he like went away from wrestling. Like he don't even do wrestling no more. He just like right. went to make they, his own bread. They, they, they did say that, but they never said why though. Yeah. 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 They and they always said. alluded that like Vince don't fuck with Shane like that. And the documentary, they were like, yeah, he don't really fuck with his son like that. Yeah. You, if you like you said though, if you tied in wrestling, you could kind you kind of got that feel. But he showed that, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say he showed. <clears throat> that's one thing that I can say. Like even watching wrestling, I felt l like that early on. You yeah, know what I mean? It's like one of them things where like everybody watch it, even if it's not like wrestling. Like you got like an uh, inkling that that shit happening, but like you need that documentary to like confirm it. Like mm -hmm. yeah, this way, this how shit go. Yeah, right. Um Damn, I had something great I wanted to add. And, uh, it, it, it well, I, was, me. Well, I was talking about Rakishi. I just randomly thought about it. was one time, it was Rakishi was about to have a match with uh, Booker T. And that nigga Rakishi was like in the bathroom, like taking a doo doo. All right, that's, <laughs> that's insane. That's insane. I'm and not co signing it. That nigga Booker T went in the bathroom. He was like, What is that smell? <laughs> like, what you doing? And like, that nigga Rakishi just walked out here and wiped his ass. And they was and that nigga like I forgot who that was that came with the Booker T. He was like, you know, you got a match with him tonight. <laughs> he was like, no, I don't. He was like, yeah, you got a match right now with, with That's Rikishi. Crazy. And bro gave him the stink face, and that nigga Booker T threw up. I just remember that. <laughs> <shit. laughs> bro, yeah, is he writing them storylines, bro? Yeah, he's bro. It's diabolical. It is, bro. Dog. I don't want to say you got to be sick to do it, but like... Oh, no, 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 You kind of no. got to be so right, way. To, to even think that I'm going to create a show to where I'm my daughter's baby father, you got to be insane. That you got to be... You got to be disgusted. That's why when them allegations came, you can't be shocked. You're like, damn, right. it was the nigga. I mean, he showed you know, it right here. That's the show. why right, that nigga right, was trying right, to buy right. the shit before it. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, nigga, like three months of the show. Guilty, nigga. He had a shit called Kiss My Ass Club. Yeah. We had women like getting down, kissing mm -hmm. his ass. Like, come I on, brother. About it. I the signs that. was yeah, there, bro. I remember that. that. Yeah. He was a sicko, my nigga. I remember nigga. that. He was showing in the planes like, one more overrated wrestler, Edge. Hold on, let Edge, me. Edge overrated like a motherfucker. Them boys I feel like, though. hold on. I feel like Edge had a a respectable spot. Man, that boy ass, bro. I feel like he had Both a respectable for spot for a long time. Yeah. A, a lot of people was huge Edge fan. Like that nigga had a few moves. I'll give you that. He, he wasn't he wasn't a great wrestler. But I feel like he had a respectable spot as far as viewership. And then yeah, it it, it increased. Man, I'm not listening to what you're saying, bro. That boy ass, man. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you who I thought. Like I ain't been tapping into wrestling for real, for real, for years. So some of the newer people, I'm not as uh, familiar with. But for the longest, I thought John Cena was. I knew he was gonna say that, bro. I thought he was. I knew he was gonna say that though. Over um. <coughs> Overrated. Nah, John Overrated. Cena. John Cena the goat. John Cena is that like <clears throat> I gotta tip my hat and tip it tip that bit again. You know what I'm saying? John Cena is oh, uh, like he is everything that I don't know how I knew he was gonna say that though. But I knew he was gonna say that because I assume we probably watched around the same era. Mm -hmm. And awesome. around that time. Yeah. The it way was, that it they was. gravitated towards him, like they put him in such a position early on. Early in his career, I think that's what kind of got me out of wrestling. Was I'm starting to see like, okay, some of these people are gifted this position. Yeah. They don't earn, you right. know what I'm saying? Like you're right. not earning these championships mm -hmm. in the way we thinking. You know what I mean? Right. But I also wasn't familiar with okay, 
let me watch the entire storyline play out. You know what I mean? So John Cena was gifted just so much early on and they were clearly trying to bite off of the rock success. The the you know what I'm saying? Like there were so many people that you could look at and say, okay, well, they tried that with this wrestler. They tried this with that wrestler. You know what I mean? I just didn't like the presentation of it initially. I stopped watching before he like brought it all together and really like honed in on John Cena. The time is the now. Kid, like, yeah. 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 Bro, when he got it all together, I mean, that nigga took over. Hindsight is 2020 again. When I'm watching back, it's like, bro, this was a beautiful storyline playing out for Fact. one. Yeah. And then two, now to see the level of success. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Peacemaker, uh, the, the Suicide Squad, like having real acting roles you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. because that's just recent like, like that, he's yeah. had a few Not that bullshit hulk hogan yeah add hulk hogan to overrated too oh hulk and hogan's then, probably and then the also most and also john cena the older he got he got the better he got mm-hmm. in the ring mm-hmm. like wrestling wise hey man i'm gonna i'm gonna cap it off one more overrated wrestler i got undertaker man he Undertaker's he extremely overrated. He's not that fire, bro. He he's got not. he got decent towards the end of the in the career when he had like the match with John Cena. I mean, not he, not John Cena, not John Cena, um, Shawn Michaels, CM Punk, all them. I would say when even, he started wrestling, the, even Batista, he had a good one. Kurt Angle was a good wrestling match I between like them Batista, two. Batista, bro. Yeah, yeah, Batista, all right, man. Batista, cool, man. Um, I respect it, but it's like I wasn't trying to. I wasn't when he went when him and Edge had that title on SmackDown. I wasn't watching that shit for real. Yeah. That shit was kind of boring. Yeah. yeah, Undertaker, Kevin Nash, like they, they, they had certain yeah, them, people that yeah, them they, big slow motherfuckers. I'm yeah. not trying to watch that shit, man. Right, nigga, Undertaker wrestling. I was a big ass nigga. Uh, I used to fuck with Giant Kevin Nash. Gonzalez. I don't watch watch that shit, man. But it was right. one of those things to where it's like, yo, I'm I'm fucking with you because I'm waiting to see the rest of NWO. I'm, right, <laughs> I'm waiting to see like. Well, you just got motherfucking Xbox. What you do? Do a big boot and then a yeah. jackknife power bomb? Yep. Th- them was his. Well, yeah, yeah. That power bomb was fucking ridiculous, though, it was. nigga. Like, you I'm were, raising you 13 feet in the mm, air, nigga. <laughs> you remember he did that shit on um, Big Show? Bro. I thought he was about to kill him. So bro. Like, bro, you don't need to be power bombing that big ass nigga, man. They used to do some shit. I was like, these niggas finna die. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I man, I'm still looking for the footage, man. I was listening to a future song and he said he seen um, Big Show jump off the top rope. I think Future was just lying, bro. I ain't never seen that shit. I got. I think he might have did though. I don't know. Big Show jumping. He said. I think he said, "Bro, did a moonsault, bro." I don't know. I don't know nah. about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Now I'm gonna tell you the craziest one that I seen. Like jumping was a uh, mankind jumping through the um the cage. The cage. Yeah, oh, that's legendary. Yeah, that's, right. that's, right. yeah, that's legendary. That's one of but quotes. that was still never forget. Like never ever ever forget. Hey, rest in peace, Bam Bam Bigler. That motherfucker would be like 400 pounds doing like oh, moonsaults. Oh, Bam salts. Bam. Bam Bam was probably one of the greatest wrestlers for yeah. real. Like what y'all he know, was y'all doing. Visceral. Oh yeah, oh, Visceral Vizera was good. Paul the Visceral, that nigga yeah. was humping niggas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Vizera, I'm gonna tell I you shit. Him, I'm gonna go with if us. we going down that road, uh, Gold Dust was actually a yeah, good yeah. wrestler. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like Gold Dust. Man. Gold Dust was a good wrestler, but he was a freak. That nigga was disgusting, actually. That nigga would slide in, lick the ring. I'd be like, Ugh. they should have put that shit in the Vince McMahon documentary. It's a it's a rumor that that nigga Gold Dust uh, went to Vince McMahon and he was like too into the character, and he told Vince McMahon he was going he wanted to get like a boob job to put the character over and Vince McMahon said man get the fuck out my nah, office that's bro. crazy that's he, love hey, you know I you definitely would have had to tell a, Gold Dust chill out you know like, you gotta be a freaky nigga though they they, Trent Vince hey, yeah Trent Vince yeah, yeah. yeah that's like out freaking Diddy yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> say yeah one more yeah one more one more and we'll get up out of here and I, I know you got some shit to promote your brand and all that sploosh life that's back definitely yeah we definitely on um, so the way I was doing the the brand was I don't open the website all year round. Mm-hmm. I just sporadically pop open and we yeah. be open for maybe a until whatever maybe the newest drop sell out, then I'll go ahead and close it or if the season fit in and I'll go ahead and close it to maybe, you know, the next season or whatever the case may be. But 
Uh, we finna open the store back uh, this Thursday. I don't know when y'all gonna add this, but Thursday. it'll be Thursday. Oh, you gonna add on Thursday? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so boom, by the time you get on Instagram on Thursday, the store will be back open. So you can go to spluslife.com yeah. and uh, check out. We got uh, two new, three new drops. Okay, there we go. That's three new drops, but everything limited too. I should say that too. For sure, so everything limited. So once it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> and then we kind of just. Yeah, got I want to say we man. did the design, but we just we just move put it on, on ice yeah, yeah. and yeah, we move sure. on to the next thing. For sure, yeah. ain't nothing wrong with that. Just make everybody feel like, um, like what they're getting is worth it. Like they don't, you know, have to worry about five million people wearing. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't want to say any brand. I don't want down any brand, but the same shirt. Yeah, we're right. Right. Same so, yeah. All right, last voicemail. I'm not sure who this is from. I'm looking at the transcript. It got your name, Joe, so I'm assuming this for you. Hopefully it's not no slander. I don't want to end the show off with slander, but <laughs> we're going to see, man. That's crazy that you would even assume that. Yeah. For you, That's I can ask you a question. Nigga, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't even, nigga ain't even say it might be some love. It might be some love. It might be some love. <laughs> it might be. Who's your, um, we were just talking about this yesterday, who's your favorite stand-up comedian? I know that's love, Phil, but you mm-hmm. hit me with the Mount Rushmore. So I'm gonna just hit you with that one. All right, I'm gonna ask. Some, I'm gonna have some white comedians on my That's shit fine. too. I'm gonna go Louis C.K. I'm gonna go Bill Burr. I'm gonna go Dave Chappelle. Wait, y'all talk. It's hot. Give me one second. I'm gonna go Chris Rock too. Chris Rock. Chris Rock, a great one. Chris Rock. That's a great. One. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go that. What you got? Chris Rock. I'm gonna go Bernie Mac. Oh man, I would now. I kind of want Bernie Mac on my shit. I'm gonna take Louis C.K. Put Bernie Mac. Bernie okay. Mac the one that, with the ghost. But Bernie Mac, yeah, I fuck with that heavy. Bernie Mac nasty with it. Yeah. Bernie Mac, Dave Chappelle in my uh, top four. We doing my worst again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Bernie Mac, Dave Chappelle. Um, what's the what's the comedian name? Bay, what's the comedian name? One who passed away. They made kids. Oh, Robin Harris. Robin Harris. That's a good one. Robin Harris, bro. Yeah. It's it is kind of hard because he didn't have a lot of material, like yeah. like years of material, like some of the other comedians do. But that adds to his legend because the short time that he the was popping, he bro. did so much, man. He did house bro. party. Even house party one was legendary. Bro. And he had the baby kids. Yeah, he had a you legendary. You ever watch stand up? Yeah, yeah. Hilarious! Oh, gotta I already know go, where you're going. Go. That's that. He a go. He a go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He a go. He a go. So I had to put Robin Harris on my. Damn, we you got Richard Pryor. I was gonna say for me, Bernie Mac, Martin Lawrence, Richard Pryor. Those would be like. I mean, uh, not Martin Lawrence, but uh, Eddie Murphy. I like Martin Lawrence, but to me, his stand up doesn't. Martin Lawrence not that good. Stand-up. Yeah, yeah. His stand up really doesn't like equate to his uh, shows. I got I gotta. Shows and movies. I'm a little, I'm a little biased only because I started watching stand up late, mm-hmm. like when I got grown. Yeah. And then I got deeper into it, probably like maybe like within the last like. That's the best time to watch because I used to watch stand up when I was a kid, but it's better understand. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you get it as an you adult. get it now, and yeah. I, you know what? I tell that back. I've been watching Comic View. My people used to love Comic View. Yeah. yeah. So I've been watching it, but you know, it come on later. So at a certain time, I had to go to bed. Yeah. And like you said, some of that stuff you don't, you just don't catch the punchline or whatever the case yeah. may be. So now that I'm older, I didn't got into it probably within the last like year. Yeah. But uh, if I had to add one more person, it's easy for me to say Richard Pryor. But I didn't watch Richard Pryor when I was growing up. Richard yeah. Pryor is amazing. Uh, so I just have, his honesty. It is, and I respect it. But. The topics that bruh had going on, even though some of them were still relevant today, they don't match what I, yeah, the era that I grew up in. That so, nigga was making some wild jokes. It was, but yeah. it was, it was, I love reality based comedy and a lot of that was based on the reality that was going on at that particular time. Yeah. So it's like. With him. With him. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> even though I remember some oh of these God. events yeah. that he's talking about that might be like current events. Right. Yeah. It's like. I remember them because people talk about them, but it wasn't like I lived through them. Right, you know what right, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So on that notion, I probably had to say cat. I fuck with it. Now I'm gonna tell y'all one that I don't think is mentioned enough, but stand up is unbelievably funny. Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, Patrice O'Neill, he a legend. Yeah. Patrice O'Neill is hilarious. 
I got Hilarious. a joke. Hilarious. I got a joke with one of my homeboys. Uh, Hollywood Shane, we talk all the time. He be telling me different stuff to watch. Got like a little Netflix. Yeah. Uh, uh, go back and forth kind of thing. What you watching? What you watching? What you watching? Yeah. What you watching? So I called him one day. I was like, man, give me a stand up comedian to watch. So he told me, Patrice. He, he told me Patrice O'Neill. He says he didn't. Yeah, he yeah, said he yeah. told me somebody else. He yeah. says he told me, uh, I think either Earthquake or Robin Harris. I can't remember what he said he told me. But I know in my mind he told me Patrice O'Neill. So yeah. I went and watched Patrice O'Neill. I ain't like it. It's a little it's a little edgy. I ain't like it. Ain't nah, no. nah, what I what I say is Yeah. Maybe I need to find a different special. Maybe his, that his special his best special was Elephant in the Room. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure. His shit sure is definitely edgy, but Patrice O'Neal is funny to me because one, he has the look of a, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not expecting you of all people to be saying some of these things, that kind yeah. of look. Also, yeah, I need to know which one you watch. Well, I don't need to know, but also <laughs> you got to put this into consideration. Patrice O'Neal, he had a, a lady that was in his life and she did a lot of cash grab shit after he died. So she was putting out mm. specials that he didn't even like. So you probably heard one of them. Probably was. Yeah, but his last one that he like promoted was Elephant in the Room. That's his, that's like his that's the one everybody bring up. That's, the, that that's the good one. We'll probably watch that tonight. Yeah. And Patrice, bro, like that nigga could deliver a joke, bro. Yeah. That oh. nigga could deliver a joke. Yeah. yeah. She uh she man, she put Russell one, put me on the uh, She put one out, man. The audio was so bad all that, man. She was just trying to get like, you know how when the rappers die and they be putting their music out? Yeah. She was doing a it bunch of, of shit. She was doing a bunch of shit yeah. like that. Yeah. I, I I Yeah. I, and you know, is it bad that when they do post humans almost that I'm not really like No. It's not bad at all because I don't fuck with none of them. I don't honestly. check it out. I don't really know one that I like. The ones that I have heard now. Now I respect the shit they did for Rich Homie. I like that they put out that one record, and I'm hoping that that kind of you they know what out, I mean. They put out a whole album. Nah, they did. They put out a whole, whole album. Damn. Yeah. I listened to it and it was, it was, it was some songs on there. He was like dissing Gunna. And I was like, nah, man, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. think he wanted that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's some things yeah. that you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and can't I feel do. like they did that too. I'm kind of glad I ain't. And it's bad that I say that because I'm a DJ, but I'm glad I ain't check it out because I ain't gonna lie. I'm a Gunner fan. Man. Yeah, he was. Gunner yeah. don't miss. Yeah. I'm a Gunner fan. Gunner man. don't miss. Like for, I love that today we're seeing artists find their pocket and really just Flourish stay in, in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because, you know, like. Before you had to be everything. Yeah, to fit. You had to knock off checks off. You had to check every box. You had exactly. to have a song for the girls. Exactly. Yeah. Song a song for the club. Hood. That was yeah. one of the yeah, biggest things nigga told me. You ain't got shit. no song for the for the club. It's like, for the yeah. like, bro, I'm not that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I got one complaint about Gunner. The last two albums were good, but he got to stop making the woe is me music. He got to get back to that drip shit. Talking That's about real. Fucking bitches and That's real. That. He got to get That's back real. to that. He ain't really been dropping that like that. But see, so I'm going to tell you we, what. Yeah, we get it, bro. Everybody hating on you. Everybody counted you out. Like, all right, bro. We get it now. The switch, thing, it, switch it back to what you facts, were doing before facts, you got locked facts. up. We don't got to talk about that no more. He, yeah. he definitely yeah. need to get away from that. But see, I'm going to tell you the thing that makes Gunna so successful is that he don't have to say much of nothing. Yeah. It really don't matter what he's saying because you can legit ride to the melodic tunes yeah. mm -hmm. and the beat. So even if you don't agree with the song, you can drown that shit out and say it's good for it's good Fact. new mood. I music. think he get a not all of it now, nah, but he get a little bit of that from Thug. Oh, yeah. like Definitely. making his voice. Or what he's saying, or whatever. Like one hundred niggas can't take away Thug yeah, influence. Studio, nah, yeah, studio fact. Game, yeah. You want to know some shit? I was actually in the studio with Thug before. Really? One that's shout out my nigga Steve. Steve did a lot of work with uh, uh Thug actually in, up in Atlanta. That session actually was like eye opening because he recorded a whole lot differently than everybody else recorded. So. Watching him record, and I was actually in there with a rapper mm -hmm. uh, at the time. So, being able to be in there and have a, the artist that I'm with see how somebody else record, mm -hmm. and that was just very it, yeah. fulfilling because it's, it's like sometimes you can tell, and that's anybody for any profession, if you're not actually doing what they're doing, like if you're not a plumber, 
it's kind of hard to tell the plumber what to do if yeah. you're not a plumber. Even if you might have good information on plumbing. Yeah. Your dad might have been a plumber. Your granddad might have been a plumber. You might come from a long line of plumbers. But if you're not a plumber, when you talk to a plumber, he going to kind of toot his nose up. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what I don't want to use a plumber, but that's I think that's what he is. Good example. Right. So if I'm managing a rapper, it's some things I might be able to tell you. But if that's I'm not in there example. rapping... Then you hear what I say, but because I'm not rapping, you might not take heed to it like you would if you saw one of your peers, the, yeah, one of your yeah. peers, and probably one of the most influential peers doing it in a different way, maybe similar to what I said before. Mm. Right. That was my. That was like one of those picture perfect moments. Yeah. How long have you been managing artists? That particular artist that I was in the A with, that was the first artist that I managed. I had been like working with artists before then, like DJing with them. Um, uh, I'll help, but it may not. It may be in more ways than just DJing. So if you right. need me to send music out, if you need me to connect with this person that I got a relationship with, you might not have a relationship with whatever. Whatever the bill might be that you need me to fit, I can fit it. But as far as just like okay, now we calling this management. Uh, that would have been twenty seventeen. What made you get into management? Just having the access and, you know what I mean, wanting I think to help? It was, yeah, it was like a perfect storm. It was like, okay, boom. I had, so I was DJing when I got that 09 year. Yeah. That was the same year that I actually got in Cool Runners. Okay. Cool Running DJ. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm with, I went from doing the teen shit to a little bit of the college shit to now I'm doing the... The big ranking shit. So mm. this the Jeezy shit, the Ply shit, the Boosie, yeah. the Webby shit, the the classic, the CIAA. Right, the, right. The, uh, you know, whatever popping in that real urban mm -hmm. market. So we doing, you know, the Ghetto Grammys, BT Awards, you know what I'm saying? We doing stuff like that. Diamond Awards. Diamond Awards. That shit. Yeah, shout so, out. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, man. Shout out, shout out to uh, Diamond Awards. Yes, so, sir. So we doing that at that particular time, and it's just like, uh, I I got all these contacts from all of these people that I done met as a DJ. Like, I got, I could, I could start to feel like I could, I mean, we talking to the same people. Right. I get on Instagram, and then these people done sign this person, or they sign that person, or they helping this person, or they doing this for this person. Well, I got I got that person on, but they called me. We talked yesterday. Yeah, definitely. And we yeah. wasn't even talking about music. Right. We was just talking, just shooting yeah. the shit. Shit, they asked me what I did in class yesterday because yeah. I'm in school at the time. So okay. they calling, checking in on that note. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But after I got out of school, it's just like, damn, what I'm finna do? You know what I'm saying? And simultaneously, this particular rapper. It was Fulio. Okay. So the particular rapper, uh, Fulio and Soja K, as yeah. a matter of fact. So they, they bought, I was just, I was at, a, I went to Lee. I was at Lee game, man, and they was there and bumped it to me, and that was the rest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the rest. So, so you still managing artists today? Um, so, Ski. Yeah, Ski. Um, but I'm look. I'm actually like, so, Ski. Situation real unique. Right, like, right, Skeet right. Skeet knows what he wants. He knows how to get what he wants. So it's not like my job is done. Right. But it's not the same situation as what you are used. Like what? We're past. We're past a lot of the things that most managerial duties would require. He knows how to do those things for himself right. and he wants to do he wants to do those things for himself. So it's not that I just duck and work or anything. It's just he real hands on. And you so, respect him as an artist. I respect that. Yeah. So and and even with that our relationship is not a managerial relationship like we call each other cousins. So it's it's Bro, if you have a, if you call me when you have a question, then I'm I'm here. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like we 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 talk whenever, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's not just strictly managerial, you right. know what I'm saying? Like in other situations. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Me and him actually we got a deeper bond in M music, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, so yeah. in other but situations might have just been music. Right. Right. But you are open to taking on artists. So I I'm, I, I want to take on another artist. That's actually like I haven't did my New Year's resolution, but like that's like my next thing. 
There you like, go. I want right. to I want to get in. I want to get in with another artist. It's just, you know, between my last situation and between skeet situation, and I ended up DJing for Tokyo for a minute. Tokyo Jet. Mm-hmm. I ended up DJing for Tokyo Jet. It wasn't managerial, but it was okay. We on the road. Right, and, right. When I'm on the road with somebody else, it's elevating. It's, it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of hard for me to be, you know, in two places at one time. 100%. So, so, so we did that, you know what I'm saying, with Tokyo for a minute. So now it's just kind of like, okay, now me and Skeet back working. Uh, he finna get ready to start back dropping music. I don't know if you've been checking, but he yeah. he, he getting ready to start back dropping the yeah. music. But uh, I'm looking for the next. For sure. So for sure. we can start Ground Zero because he's, he's not Ground Zero anymore. Yeah, he's right. already making uh, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, thousand dollars every weekend from shows. So he's yeah. not he got a what he need from me. He got a core fan base. Yeah. What he need from yeah. me is not the same as what yeah. another artist. What might. another artist yeah. might need. So I knew he was. I, I yeah. I always because he a legend in Jacksonville. But man, when I seen the shit when he did with the Skeety Fest, how he had that packed out. Did you come? I didn't go, but I seen it online. That nigga, that I, nigga yeah, I, 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 I was there. It, it was it was dope. But he had a swing. I seen it. It was swing. It was swing. It was swing. But you know, like. If you did come to the Skitty Fest, then you would have been able to see what I get able or what I'm able to see when we go on the road. Because right, I still right. DJ for him, too. Right, right. So it's the same thing. Yeah. But it's just when you home and you not going with him like I am going with him, you don't get a chance to see that every week. You know, in Palak, uh, Pensacola, Tampa, right. St. Pete, uh, Jupiter, Florida, uh, West Palm Beach, uh, a number of other places that bro go to and it kind of be the same reaction that it be here. It's just, you know, we home and everybody don't travel yeah, to yeah. be able to see that. But, like, I feel like Brett underrated. Definitely. Nah, definitely. Yeah. I feel like Brett underrated. I feel like when they do, like, the Florida list and they talk about the Florida artists, like, they kind of be leaving bro off, but I know for a fact, bro, get more for a show than yeah. the people that they be naming. Or if yeah. even if he doesn't get more a show, he performs more consistently. Yeah. So I mean, you you get fifteen or twenty grand, but you only get that once every other month. Yeah. I mean, he get yeah, he, less, but he, he get every week. there before he even changed the name back when he was D Lo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, shout out to Skeet, man. Shout out, so sure. yeah. Shout out to Skeet. Y'all got a favorite on the local rapper? I don't want to call it a local rapper. That's I feel like that is disrespectful. But a rapper that's from our city, mm. people got a negative connotation with that. With that, I mean, term. it would tough. It would be tough for me to name a favorite. But I, I definitely, I man, I got a gang load of niggas that I fuck with for sure. I like a lot of like the underground niggas. If you can name two niggas just off the top of your head, it just ain't no shade to nobody else. It's just whatever came to them boys. At you know who was my favorite one? I'm mad he don't make music. I don't. I I kind of stop keeping up with him. I used to fuck with uh, Ebo G. I used okay. to fuck with his music. Right, man, Shout Ebo out. had man, Ebo had some uh, some shit. Um, yeah. Mook, another one, uh, Mookie that, that. Yeah. Different reason though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mookie, Mookie had some shit though. Um, my favorite, yeah, one of my favorite Jacksonville rappers. He passed on Butter. That was my favorite one. Butter Double. Yeah, butter, okay, butter, okay, butter, butter okay. had some shit. Butter I had, had, the I had caught music. on. I, I caught that. on. Um, I caught on to him. He was really on some like on the little motion wave. Yeah, like, yeah. He yeah. had some uh, he start, hustle music. To be yeah. honest, he started that in the city because yeah. nobody was doing that. Before. I think I, I think I could go for that. I think I could yeah. go for that. And even if he did, it was it was more authentic, authentic because of what he was doing with it. You see him with Benefit Ray. Yeah. You see him with the people who doing motion shit. You see so even what he if he doing. wasn't the first, he popped it hard. Yeah, he was a V's. He was with um, you feel me? Uh, Los and Nutty was fucking you with him. Heavy. Like he all was, the Detroit niggas fact. that was started that that wave was fucking with him and like fact. making fact. music with him. So fact. like you gotta respect that more than anybody else doing it. Pretty much. Um, while we doing this, bro, people gonna see this, bro. Bro, we we it's music is music, bro. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, man. Music bro. is music, bro. Cause we, everybody gonna get so political with it, bro. And it's yeah. just like, nah, it ain't, bro. It's not. It's, it's 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 for me. It's one of those things to where you gotta learn to appreciate the niggas around you. You know the niggas that are making music in your city. There you go. That's, Even if they're not around you, if exactly. you got a song that and you like and everyone. you don't know them, like bro, it's okay. It's, <laughs> it, you gotta learn to appreciate the music in your city, and the reason why is 
One, if niggas get on, it brings more attention to Fact. your city. Fact. We yeah. see Fact. that. You know, we see that from what's happening in Jacksonville now. Niggas is right now just at a cash grab for Jacksonville. Like, this ain't no shade to nobody. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I salute and I respect everybody that's been signed. But they definitely picking niggas up and just saying, hey, we're searching for a sound. You know what I'm saying? Fact. I'm going to sign you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think that when you learn to appreciate what your city is offering, you definitely put the city itself in a position to where any nigga can make it. Fact. Now, any nigga has opportunity. Now, there's so much more for you to, to, to experience. Since niggas have gotten signed in Jacksonville, I can tell you this. Personally, I've heard a huge elevation in the local music scene. Mm. We're talking about from sonically, like how the song is orchestrated, having choruses, having bridges. Mm-hmm. Like the 2007? bottom is the, the bottom and raised up. Bro, yeah. what? Yeah, the bottom and 2007 raised. niggas ain't never had a bridge. You right. know what I mean? Fast. But there's examples of what works that came from here. Exactly. That you can point That's to what you that need. we didn't have before. That's what you need. The thing though is it takes so much support to mm-hmm. get to that point. Mm-hmm. Um I love to think about like the rock scene, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of the rock comes from a lot of the same areas. That's oftentimes, true. right? Jacksonville has even had yeah, a few like the several biscuit. Rock bands, yep. yeah. Limp Biscuit. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the the guitarist or a few members from Yellow Card might have been from yeah. Jacksonville. They're I from, think it is. Uh, yeah. I think they're from like Daytona. I, I know it's close. Yeah. If it's, it's not close. Jacksonville, it's real close. It's like Daytona. Yeah, I know one of I them about is from too. Jacksonville. Yeah, I was and then Yellow the, um, uh, uh, the biggest one is uh, uh, Van Halen. If I'm not mistaken, Leonard Skinner. Leonard Skinner. Leonard there Skinner. Skinner. Leonard, yeah, there you go. go. I forgot about uh, that. Leonard too. Skinner. But um. I you open the door to so like, bro. It it just takes one thing. So rock opened the door to Jacksonville even being on the music scene. Period. Fast. Period. Fast. You know what I mean? It's all a, it's all Legos. It's all building up to the next thing. The rock scene has been built. There's a huge documentary about. Um, I want to say it's about Nirvana, but it might have been like about the birth of rock. But it talks about bands from Seattle and shit. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest things in it was how they started in garages. They overpacked, you know, people's houses and shit. They had to go to the clubs. The clubs got overpacked. It's like the radio had to play mm-hmm. them in their city. That's what we need now. 106, I salute them so much because they they, they promote that, hey, we're looking for local talent Fact. to be able to play you. They're playing local talent on a regular basis. You know what I mean? And it's Fact. not just... That late ass hour that we used to get on ninety three, uh, uh, the beat. You know. What Let I mean? me ask you a question about that though. Huh? Should should we shun them for that? Who ninety three? Nah, not at all. Not at all. Because I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm just asking. I'm gonna tell you why. Not at all because one ninety three has always been in that syndicated position, and they've always aspired to be in that position to where. Mm-hmm. Like you see the Tom Joyner show, yep, yep, then yep, it, yep, it yep. turned to the Steve Harvey, then you yep, get the yep, Breakfast yep. Club. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, We've yep. seen the show, I mean, uh, 93 be able to make advancements in a way that it puts us on that national news level, right? Like, I appreciate your honesty, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Because most people, they, and I'm not on either side of the fence, I just understand. You know what I'm saying? When you understand, you don't really have to be on the side of the fence. You just understand. So I understand what the model is over there. And I also understand what the model is over at 1061. And then I think this. I think that um, a lot of the DJs, you know, Q45 was up at 93 for a while. Like, n- not to say he had that. I mean, Q45 has had his radio spin at, at 93. Um, Doom has his his his, his time on, on 93. The the there are so many people that are trying to do things that are outside of the city or mm-hmm. opening doors mm-hmm. to the city in ways we can't see or appreciate. Fast. So they they do get a lot of hardship because there's a, a disconnect. 
That's true. Yeah. People don't understand what Dr. Doom. When I was making music 15 years ago, type shit, Dr. Doom saw me perform one night, and Dr. Doom was like, Yo, I want to be able to help you. I got an opportunity with Genuine. I got a label deal. You know what I'm saying? And I'm getting X artist signed. I'm getting, you know what I mean? Right. I'm building these people up into these positions. They were trying to open doors behind the scenes to be able to create a, 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 a music outlet. You know right. what I mean? Today, I think that um, because we're stricken by that whole drill music scene, mm-hmm. we're not. Again, yeah. we're, we're just back into that loop to where we don't see what's happening behind the scenes with, yo, I'm trying to connect these dots. Yeah. Lil Duval is one of the biggest plugs in it. Like, man, Lil Duval get all the love from me. Lil Duval is one of my real niggas of the week just because Lil Duval has put several niggas on. He came back to the city, opened up a store in the hood. Fact. He's helping to orchestrate success for a lot of niggas locally. You know what I'm saying? And putting them, introducing them to major, like, unbelievable platform. You you know, an unbelievable platform, an audience of X amount of people. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just off the strength. You're from Jacksonville. I fuck with you. We have to learn to support. So just circling back to the music scene. We have to learn to support our artists. We got to learn to support our people. You might not fuck with every comedian. Fast. But if you go out to a local comedy act, you might find mm-hmm. that it's one or two you do. Mm-hmm. If you go out to the local poetry scene, you might not even be in the poetry like that. But it's something for you and your girl to do. It's something for you. You know what I'm saying? Fast. And then from that, you find one person that you can fuck with. So I'm a I'm a huge advocate for just supporting underground shit in that regard. Yeah, I can dig it. I salute 106, and I don't think 93 deserves any <coughs> flack. I do think that 93 should continue to search for ways that they can, you know what I'm saying? Support. Yeah, support a local scene. And it doesn't have to just be stricken to, to the music, but... Again, I think both of them deserve their praise. I can dig that. I can definitely dig that. My bad to go on a, a little rant. Oh, you good. good. You good. All right, we're going to do this last voicemail. We're going to get up out of here. I think I'm reading it. I'm pretty sure it's from Danny, so let's get into this one. I forgot it was the third voicemail. Yo, Amp, Joe, my niggas. This is uh, it's your boy Danny Fox. who was calling in from Most Corner, South Carolina. I'm re-listening to this episode, this most recent episode with Seek Almighty. <laughs> God damn, boy, this this guy here, this is even worse than I originally thought. I'm gonna pause it. You know it's crazy because Danny cursed. Danny don't curse. Danny, man. Danny, Danny do not. <laughs> Danny I be feeling curse. bad when I be cursing talking to Danny. <laughs> you know it's bad. Danny's such a good, rep- like respectable man. It's like, yeah. hey, my bad, Danny. This I said shit. This man got some shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, OG, I thought OG Kells was bullshitting when he said dude look like Sly Stone until I went on his IG and looked and saw and I'm like, damn, <laughs> Kells right. I, <laughs> man, this poor dude, man. <laughs> he swear he rapped better than Jay Z. <laughs> man, it was an absolute shit show, but I, I appreciate the content, man. This thing is keeping me entertained. So yeah, um, y'all boys hold him down. Oh. Hey man, appreciate that, Danny. Hey man, Danny, appreciate hey, that. Danny, step in, man. I know Danny an OG too, man. Get out, give him another, give him some advice. OG to OG, man. Yeah, I'm man. Up. Invite him on your shit. And nah, it, don't it. do, don't do that. <laughs> just, just behind the scenes, hit him up. Get that man some pointers, man. Tell him where he fucking up at. Tell him Joe sent you. <laughs> I tell him, tell him Alexis, mad as nah, fuck tell him Alexis Andrews sent you. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> They hear listening. <laughs> yeah, he hear listening. Yeah, he listen like a motherfucker, man. You think you could go seventeen years with no coochie? Man, let's not talk about that. Man. I'm let's just saying. Just, I'm hey, just man, the send in voicemails. Hit us up four two four. Stop asking questions. You know the answer to four two four two six zero R O P. That's four two four two six zero R O P. Man, shout out. <laughs> hey, man, shout out DJ Prince Patron. Yeah, pulling up, man. Us, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Yeah, yeah. I've been, like I said, I've been waiting to come on here for a minute. Oh, definitely, man. We, we made it. Hey, man, tell y'all my two, in the um, city. my two favorite episodes. Y'all had an episode with Teddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That, mm-hmm. was, that was good. That was a. 
<laughs> See, Kevin, I'll fuck with that one. Shout out to Teddy. Teddy back. Man, yeah, Teddy, man. Sure. Bring me back when y'all bring Teddy back, man. Hey, that's so it. So me and Teddy could link up. You feel me? You never me? met Teddy? Huh? You never met Teddy? Not in person. Not in person. We, I don't, I don't, like, if I see somebody doing something in the city and I fuck with it, <laughs> yeah, I reach out to them and be like, hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? I salute you, hey, bro, keep doing what you're doing. You know what, what I'm saying? Like, because we need more whatever, whatever <coughs> going on at this moment, whether it's DJing, rapping, playing sports, yeah. we need more of everything. Yeah. So, I fuck, did reach yeah. out to bro, and bro reached back, bro. I was like, hey, bro, yeah. I appreciate you reaching out. Yeah, nah, cool, Teddy dude. a real nigga. Yeah, yeah. Fact, I fuck with fact. Teddy 1,000%. Teddy one of the realest niggas in the city, man. No, nah, bro, 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 yeah, I can tell, bro, salute. you know, bro, it's like what I call an authentic city man. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah, he, yeah when he came on our show, he really didn't have that many. He didn't really have that many followers like that, and he, he didn't really have that many skits like that. Bro, go I crazy, just, I just, He just hit the podcast up and, like, really... It, it, people hit the podcast up all the time, and I'll be like, yeah. yeah. When he hit the show up, I was like, man, look at this nigga page. Yeah. I just need to see two skits. I was like, yeah, come on the show, bro. Bruh, that nigga nah, bro, sent bro, me a video. Wild. That nigga was like, bro, this nigga hilarious. We that finna bring wild. him on the podcast. Dog, he sent me one of the clips when that nigga was doing the uh the hood nigga exercises. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Dog, I was crying. I said, bro, I can't wait. I can't nah. wait to meet this nigga. Jit is an authentic city man. It's Cause what make him funny is the fact that he's relatable. One thousand yeah. percent. So then, it's not even like he just making shit up. He just the biggest he's authentic thing I, city man. He had just like a he had just like a Jacksonville yeah, nigga. One hundred percent. Just maybe times two he, or three. Yeah, he was blowing. He blowing up. One of my homegirls, she lived like in she from San Antonio. She sent me one of his skits. She was she just sent it to me. I was like, all right, this nigga on the show. He, he sent me the one where he had the tattoo on his neck. Oh, and yeah. he was like, I feel like I could do bad things. <laughs> yeah, she sent me that. That shit be having me crying. <laughs> it be times I deal that nigga and just be like, bro, that shit was funny nah, as fuck. Nah, yeah. That he nigga. go far because he natural. The, yeah. the, nah, I'm going to tell you, the biggest thing that I fuck with that I think going to offer him the most success is when you talk about relatable He'll tell some personal shit that just let you know that whatever you're going through, you ain't the only one. He's battling things in ways that you might be able to relate to in another act. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. So, bro, he done been so vulnerable at times that I've had to reach out and tell him, like, bro, just you being this honest, I respect you even more. You know what Facts. I'm saying? And I salute you. Because again, it takes one. It takes a a, a, a big man to uh nah, to yeah talk about like having troubles with your girl, having troubles in your personal life. Not you know what I'm saying? Uh, like he uh, roommate. That's yeah. what he. That's what he say. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that'd be, yeah. that'd be dying laughing. <laughs> they, he call her roommate. I did wonder that. Though. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, roommate. That's Bro, what that saying. Be it's fun. funny though. Nah. I, I know what's going on. That nah, nigga is yeah. 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 What's the other episode? You you were saying two. Huh? You said uh, the Teddy yeah. one and uh, the Skeet one, of course. Just cause he was on it. You talking about that? He was on how Rihanna shit. Nah, Skeet came on y'all before too, didn't? It? Nah, he ain't. Nah, nah. We Skeet. Nah, but we nah, need nah, to have Skeet. We do need to. I think Skeet might have. So then I had to come with. I had to come with somebody else that was shooting with y'all. Probably. I just don't know who it was. Probably. I don't know, man, because I would have... Because I, I do remember coming in here to shoot... Yeah, I met you like four times. Already, right. So. I remember coming in here to shoot our three podcast. Of them, three like, of them was in here. Right. Right. Exactly. I remember I remember coming I to know, shoot man, our podcast like two or three times. We would have had a whole other conversation before, nigga. Like I say, shit, the parties, I would have talked to you about that I shit. I don't know, though, because who I remember whoever y'all was interviewing, I was in, but I think when y'all started interviewing, because y'all don't like the door open and close, yeah. I think I was outside. I think possibly, I was just outside possibly. smoking. I was with somebody though. I just can't remember who it was. Gotcha. Was you here with S C Y Jim? Was there? Nah. I oh, fought, okay. I fought, so uh, my boy Smoke. That's why that's where I met Smoke at. When so he, me and Smoke SCY actually Jim. got a management company together. Yeah. Mm. And you know he got We yeah, need yeah. we need to, we need to get smoke on a pod one yeah, day. Yeah, for sure. Too. When we was coming up here I think maybe, I don't know if it was the first time, but I know one of the times that I that I that I met you, it was with smoke. Because yeah. that's what we was doing. Uh, it's fu- it's funny because I seen Smoke when I had went to uh, New Orleans. I went to the Jags <laughs> same game when I oh, seen you know, that nigga that. out there. I was like, what the fuck? That's how it be when you be somewhere mm-hmm. and you see somebody, yeah. you know, you be like, bro, 
What the hell you doing? Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just odd yeah. seeing a nigga from the city. He's just like, what the fuck? This nigga just random. Yeah. Bro, I, I would say probably, it's not every time, but I would say probably every other time I go somewhere random, that stuff, that happens. Yeah. yeah. And even if it's not like somebody that I knew from Jacksonville, it'd be somebody that I knew from one of these other lives. We got a homie had. like that. This nigga kills. That nigga will travel anywhere, bro. Everywhere he travels, he see a nigga that he fuck with, like, on a, uh, a strong level. Nah, for real. Everywhere he go, from Jacksonville. Yeah. And it be like both of them was traveling at the same time Some, type shit. Bro, you it got just, people like that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got people out here that's like that, bro. <laughs> they just, like, bro. Because even, if, if, like, I, have, I, know, I know what I do and all of what I did in my right, life. Right. But I always have a homeboy or two around. I know they haven't did half, <laughs> and it's like of how what you, I did, yeah. bro. But somehow, bro, they can get indoors, bro. That I can't even get in, bro. It be like, <laughs> it be like, bro, what's this such that, bro? Cause this, this this nigga here, bro, he just got a knack for this shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, you know what I call him? You huh. said it earlier. I call him nomads. I yeah. got three nomad yeah. homeboys, bro. Yeah. They don't have. They not even if they live here. I don't tie them with living here because they just be elsewhere yeah. so much. But you got a nice hand map, bro. bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know it's crazy. The only reason I say that yeah. for the longest time. So back in 2008, I had a MacBook. It was black. Mm -hmm. At the time, that was that was when they went white. Yeah. And it was boxy. Mm -hmm. And then they end up going like what they call it, space gray. Yeah. For a while, that was the only that was the only black MacBook. So this this pretty nice. Sure, bro. Yeah. I fuck with you. Nigga, the box said when I got the box, that shit said navy blue. When I opened it, I'm like, bro, that's black. Bro, I got that bit after. I mean, I got mine after this. I see nigga. what they saying, but and I came black. one day. Mm. My shit silver. I, I see his shit. I start to take my shit away. Nah, no like, cap. That be hard. That shit hard. Nah, that one's the, that's one of the Best Buy exclusive. Like you gotta go to Best Buy to get oh, that one. Oh nah, I went to the exchange. Uh -oh. No tax, nigga. That's crazy. Man. Yeah. I got just a black where they used to Apple used to make a black body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before they they came out with a white and black. Yeah. So I had it, and then I had uh, one of my computer guys just keep upgrading it. So even though the body was old, it was a brand. It was yeah. Uh, at whatever time it was, it was a brand new Mac yeah. on the inside. Yeah. I was. I used to do the same thing. Then one day that white screen got on there, and ain't never. Oh, I ain't paying. Let me just get another one. Nigga, them shits ain't worth it, bro. I had one. I took it to a computer repair spot. And the screen went black on that shit. Nigga said eight hundred dollars. I said, nigga, no yeah, bro, yeah, you might as well save about uh, three hundred more. And yeah, get yeah, one. nigga. I was like, shit, for five hundred more, I'm I'm in the game. I'm at least getting thirteen inches. Pause. No pause. Right, good pause. That was crazy. Good pause. That was. Crazy. <laughs> I got to come back, though, y'all boys. I hey. enjoy myself today, man. Yeah, yes, man. man. Hey, Great man. episode, promote, actually. Yeah, promote all your stuff, man. We're going to get up out of here, man. DJ Prince Patron. Y'all follow your boy on Instagram. Um, I actually just changed my Twitter over to Sploosh Life. But follow me uh, on Instagram, at DJ Prince Patron. Follow the brand. It's at Sploosh Life. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Website is SploosHLife.com. New drop coming this Thursday. By the time y'all see it. It should be out then. Um, I'm gonna post them, repost it, drop the link to the to the to the pod. Yep. I'm gonna repost it twice and then drop the link to the website. So if y'all like y'all like uh, the clothing brand, y'all come get you some clothes. Come do what you gotta do. And we just started um, Spruce Life Sports. Mm. Mm, there we so, go. So we finna be doing enrichment for uh, you know athletes for sure. And you know we're gonna be making sure you know they. Play good, they look good, you know what I'm saying? So eventually they can get paid good. For sure. Definitely, definitely. For sure. We got league, league, league athletes in Jacksonville. So now we do. So, and, 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 you know, just like music, that's growing as well. 1,000%. Yeah, like, that's growing as well. So yeah. I definitely want, I want to be a part of because I, I used to play sports too. So I want to yeah. be a part of that as well. Yeah, because so. they just started the NIL for uh, Georgia. Mm -hmm. High school athletes, mm -hmm. it's coming yeah. to Florida. It's oh, one thousand percent, one thousand. Yeah. I already know it's coming to Florida. Nigga. That whole NIL thing is crazy. But what I will say is, as a brand owner, it is beneficial to people like myself because you have access to some of these athletes and they're able to mm -hmm. market at such a high market. level. Yeah, and you, yeah. I mean, even it's not even exploiting the athlete; they're learning how to play the marketing game mm -hmm. well before. You know they get older or they get they get grown. Yeah. 
Yeah. And not even just a marketing game, but but uh, brand deals. You know what I'm saying? Like they're learning so Business. much at yeah, exactly Business. at such an early age in a way that not just are they protected. You know what I'm saying? But they they, they have full it. control. Exactly. So yeah, 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 I fuck with it. Yeah, I'll look out for all that. We're definitely gonna do a part two, of course. Oh, man. got to, got to, to come back. I gotta bring out the gifts. Hey, man. Oh, definitely, definitely. For sure. And, and, and that tequila. We're gonna have another sure, round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you spoke it to us this one. We didn't never have skeet on the show, but we're gonna get skeet on, man. Man, sure. we're gonna do that. We're, we're gonna, gonna do that. that. I'm gonna call him as soon as I leave. We're yeah. gonna make that happen. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, because like I said, we finna drop some new music. So it's oh, yeah, definitely. That's perfect timing there, man. Perfect, 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 perfect. Hey, man. This has been another episode of REOP, another classic episode. We dropped three classes back to back to back to back, man. <laughs> and got some classes on Patreon dropped this week, man. With all that said, it's your boy Ampavelli. Mr. J. DJ Prince Patron. Y'all go subscribe to that Patreon. You heard me? Yes, sir. With all that said, we out. <laughs>